All right. How do I ensure this thing? Oh, I don't remember. How did you do it last I time? I don't remember either. I'm trying to remember how I s I'm supposed to... You know what? Fuck it. That's going to be the intro. Welcome, everybody, to the, uh, the next tier list video. Uh, the last one is currently sitting at uh, 20,000 views, which is actually insane. The last time I checked it, like, I swear to God, just like a month ago, it was like uh, at 8,000. So apparently these things are in high demand and we've been needing to do this for a while. And a lot of you guys have been asking for it. So, yeah, we're here to uh, knock this bitch out real quick. Now, uh, Frosty, I forgot that I should share my screen with you, even though you're probably not going to look. But here you go. Oh, shit. Here you go anyway, okay. so you can see what I'm kind of looking at here. So I, I have it up on the other monitor. Yeah, so I set it up. So the tier list is right here, obviously. Uh, we're doing the same format as last time. We got S, A, B, C, D, and F. The only times we're using the pluses is if I give a class a C, and if Frosty gives a class a B, we're going to uh, average that out, so it would be a C plus. So if we disagree on what a class is supposed to be ranked at, we're going to average it. So if he says a class is S, and I say a class is B, it would be an A. But the pluses are only if we need to average something out. We're only assigning the non-pluses. Right. I um, I do want to amend a little bit some of the rules that we had last time. Okay. Because last last time we based it on, I, I think we said your your average player, or maybe even. Some. I think we said average player two sixty five to two sixty nine. Right. So I, I'm going to, you can feel how you want about this, but in my head, when I'm thinking about balance, I, I'm going to be thinking about if you're at least 269 because of the market and Bartali and everything that's out. Yeah, I think, I that's, think that's 269 is very reachable now. Well, also and the last chapters of the Bartali have came out since then. So it just makes sense for it to be 269 now. Right. And then the other thing is, I, I'm going to have not I'm not going to have McHands in mind, but I'm going to have like decent PVPers in mind when I'm talking about it because if you're looking at a tier list video, my assumption is that you're looking because you're actually willing to do a little bit of research and try to learn the class you're going to pick, or you want to know what the easiest class is and thus. <laughs> which one doesn't take skill so if i feel like something is really good and doesn't take skill i'll, I'll try my best to specify that Wizard but witch. my assumption is going to be based or my my uh Bone. yeah my opinions are going to be based on assuming the, the person piloting the character is is decent decently versed in the class is that I fair think, yeah that's fair i i think I say average, but I mean, we just had this discussion, I think like two podcasts ago, where my opinion of average and your opinion of average, what that means in BDO is like to you, average, your average player is like kind of bad. To me, average just means like you're doing the bare minimum to be an effective player, which I think you said you disagree with, that you don't think an average player is an effect player. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I just think like, I don't think the app, uh, well, fuck, I don't know. I guess it depends though, right? Because in PvE, average can feel different than PvP. So I guess <laughs> I'm also I'm also going to preface it with that. Like, it, I'm referring to PvP. Yeah. Like, you really, in most cases, don't need to be a god-tier player to be good well, at PvE. We can, we can just agree that wh whenever we're talking about this class, we're assuming that it's being controlled by someone who is capable of handling it at a you know a, a level at which they can be competitive you know what i'm Correct. saying at that ap bracket that's essentially what we're saying so keep yeah. that in mind we're not saying that you know uh if i say i think warrior is bad in large scale i'm not assuming that this warrior is just diving into the enemy ball with you know no pa or anything you know this warrior actually yeah. is you know able to play large scale somewhat competently for what the class can do in large scale which still ain't much yeah. 
he moved into the ball with head chase and then when he was yeah. in there he used solar flare immediately on a wizard that just he didn't just charge into the ball he charged into the ball with his hundred percent which according to frosty i think it was in the discord the other day is the most op thing in the fucking game i did that is not true <laughs> I did not say that. I think the war okay, we'll is exactly we'll get into it. where... We'll into all right. <laughs> okay, if you look on the left side right. of the screen, if you look on the left side of the screen, you'll see I got a little notepad here. So I wrote down um, the four things that I think we should judge it on. Large-scale PvP, PvE capability, 1v1 capability, and then the last thing I put in is aesthetic. And I know that that is, like, just very opinionated. There's nothing, like, factual about that at all. But I feel like a lot of people use tier lists to judge what class they want to play. And aesthetic is a really big part of that. So I thought I would add it in just as, like, an extra thing. But you'll also see that I weighted them. So, uh, in my opinion, and I think you agreed last time, Frosty. I don't know if you still agree. But large-scale PvP is probably the heaviest uh weighted thing out of these four things followed by pve capability followed by 1v1 capability and then followed by aesthetic which has almost no weight whatsoever because again purely opinion but I, I thought it would be nice to talk about it anyway is that okay yeah for me i, I like 1v1s a lot like to me they're super important so i guess yeah i mean yes but just not not like the difference between PvE being important and 1v1 is not far, in my, for me personally. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying in terms of importance, enough. right? Like, right. I'm not like assigning these things numbers. I'm just saying large-scale PvP is probably sure. the most important, and then PvE, and then 1v1, and then personal opinion on aesthetic. From the great words of Nayashi, I'm pretty sure being good at 1v1 means you get to stay in your grind spot longer <laughs> and means you're better at PvE. Yeah, until they just grief your rotation and they're an undeckable guild, so you just have to... The drop. No, they were in a deckable guild, but they dropped. <laughs> they dropped, dude. Just to grief <laughs> Um. Also, there were a couple people on the last tier list that were complaining that uh, we weren't like consistent in our ratings of uh like we assigned one class you know like this grade on large skill this grade on uh 1v1 this grade on pve and then we assigned the same similar if not the same grades to another class but then we ranked the other class a little bit lower um again this is just because we only have a certain amount of grades here i just want to point that out we only have a certain amount of grades so it's like very slight differences might not mean or might mean that they might not be on the same tier does that make sense so like if this class is slightly worse than this other class we might feel like it's just enough to edge them under the other class does that make sense yeah two two c grades doesn't mean those two classes are the exact exactly. same level of exactly whatever. yeah there's so just keep in mind that we're working with six categories here and that's not enough to really like 100% nail down the complexity of every class in this game. So just keep that in mind moving forward. Um, and then I also got uh, this over here. Uh, one is large scale, two is PVE, three is 1v1, and then four is aesthetic. So that way you'll be able to see a nice little lineup of uh, all the things that we rated. So I'm going to leave a uh, timestamp right now on screen. It should go to the end of the video whenever we have all of this filled out. We kind of give like our final thoughts on it. So if you want to skip there, then you can. But I do recommend staying for the whole thing because it's really important to hear like our reasoning, right? The logic behind the things that we're saying. And if you disagree with us after hearing what we have to say, then that's chill. But if you just skip to the end and then you see that like, I said uh, Striker is really good and really easy, and then you get mad about it without even hearing what I have to say, then like it kind of discredits you. So highly recommend just hearing us out on what we have to say. And yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, and you don't you don't also have to be mad at Rezar saying that. I'll be mad. <laughs> All right, uh, I lined them up in terms of uh, their awakenings coming out. So first up is okay. Warrior. Uh, now, <laughs> do 
do we have to remember what we had last no, time? No, no, don't bother. Okay. This is just from our yes. point of view today. Although, obviously, Warrior hasn't changed too much. But our perspectives may have changed. Our perspectives may have changed, depending on if we've tried the class like, or not. Like, I don't think Tamer Something changed like. that much, but I know you're going to have some very different thoughts on Tamer. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. So, with Warrior, me personally, I put I put the 1v1 um, A, A tier. Okay. Um... In the hands of a good player, it can be A tier. It's very good. It's capable of of moving in a 1v1, dodging. You can dictate a fight if you're good, know what you're doing. Its combo potential is really high. Um, it's a hard to play class, and hard to learn class, so you're not just going to get it for picking it up. But yeah, it's good in 1v1s. Uh, large scale, I'm going to give it... Um, I'm, I'm probably going to rate it large scale at a C. Are we going in order here? Is it PV should I have done PVE or does No, it you're fine. Whatever way you want. Okay, to so go. so large scale I'm gonna put it at a C. Um the bottom line is like a warrior is not making or breaking a siege, in my opinion. Um there are good warriors that do perform well and they can make it feel and look better than a C. I agree with that. But um for the most part that's not happening, even with pretty good warriors, so yeah, I'm gonna put it at a C. Um, because of uh, mobility and it's the way it moves in balls. It's frontline class that can't frontline, which is a problem with our game currently and the way it's set up. So yeah, Warrior C large scale PVE. I'm gonna put it at a B. It's like right down the middle in PVE and aesthetics. Honestly, in my opinion, is probably an A. I think Warrior just looks badass through and through. I hate the pre-awakened look, but I think the awakening looks really cool and. Almost all of the outfits look really fucking cool, and they have a lot of great options. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I agree with you for the most part. Uh, I probably before I played Warrior, and I really started realizing what the class is kind of like morphed into in a way for large scale. I probably would have ranked it low. In fact, I think I did in the last tier, but um, yeah, honestly, like it. In my experience, the best way to play a warrior right now is kind of like a flank. The thing is, is you're kind of like a shitty one, right? You're not as good as, like, Ninja, Kuno, Musa, Mewa. Um, but you're still pretty good. Um, I shouldn't be. Yeah, it's cutting out. I don't know why at the, at the end of your sentences, it's like, it makes a pop noise and cuts out. Huh, that's strange. Um... Anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, let's see, it was large scale C, I agree, um, it was PVB, you thought? I think I can agree with that. It doesn't seem to really overperform nor struggle at any particular spot. Like, I've never heard a warrior being like, oh, dude, grinding in history is just so hard, you know what I mean? So, they, I think they do pretty well in PvE, and then 1v1s, like you said, it's got a lot of potential, it's a very combo heavy class. Um, I think it falls like just short of uh, S tier in terms of their 1v1, honest. like just barely, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. And then aesthetic, I would put the aesthetic at a B. Maybe it's just because I've played the class for so long, but the enemy are kind of boring. The only animations that I really like on the class are Reckless Blow and the 100%, honestly. Um, in the Awakening, anyway. In the Pre-Awakening, I also like uh, the Ground. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. And again, keep in mind, the aesthetics... Didn't mean to do that, but that's one way to solve that. Yeah. Um... <laughs> What was I saying? The aesthetics aren't gonna, aren't really weighted at all. So keep that in mind. The aesthetics aren't rated like at all in terms of the overall score. So we both agree on this. So it would be the most important thing is large scale, which is a C. Second most important thing is PVE, which is a B. And then the least important thing out of the three is 1v1, which is an A. So where do you think that puts it overall? Uh, for me personally, I think it, uh, I think it's a, a, a B, but like a, 
middle to lower yeah. B. I agree. I, I think I would put it C plus if we could, but again, we're not doing that, so I think I would put it in B probably. Lower B, like you said. Um is it sounding better now? Are we good? Yes. Yeah, yeah, the a lot less choppy. I think the you streaming the video to me was fucking weird. Probably. My internet does suck. Moving on. Uh Sork. We got Sork. Uh, Time for you right. to chill, baby. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. And I, I love I love Sork so much. But that shit's busted right now. Like it's actually pretty overpowered, so not getting into what should change, but yeah, right now it's it's one v ones. I'm putting it at S. I think that good players can kill anybody with it. Great players are like basically unkillable, like gr like great great players. Um, you do have to learn how to fight with it and how what other classes are capable of doing. Um, just as an example, when ninjas using murderous intent in your face a lot of sorks get caught by that but the good sorks don't they can uh turn back slash or um dash back dash backward and use shadow ignition or whatever to catch or just to be safe using engulfing shadow so even in situations where you a bad player is unsafe good players are not so um 1v1 i put it at s large scale i would put it <laughs> if i could i'd put it at like an a minus I think it's good in large scale because you can stay alive, but you're not really sitting there dishing out a ton of damage in the ball. You're more of a flex class, and I still think because of mobility and the way mobility works that for long distance and getting in and out and escapability, I think Ninja is still a little bit better in that regard. So for Sork, I'm putting it at an A, but I do think it is great. And I'm not saying it can't poke in and get out, but it's like, Eventually, you do run out of stamina, and you don't have concealment and can just hide to bide time. You you have to actually get away completely once you want to get out. So yeah, um, and then PV PVE it's it's an A because it's really good everywhere. It's not. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a place it's the best at. I don't think it's the best anywhere, but it's pretty damn good everywhere. So. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give it PVE an A. And then aesthetically, it's super cool looking. Although I really feel like they don't come out with a lot of great costumes for that class. I don't know why. <laughs> but I, I really hate most of the costumes on Sork. But aesthetically, she looks awesome. Her weapon's sick. The pre awaken skills look cool. The awaken skills look cool, even though mildly repetitive. Um, but yeah, so uh, overall, are we saying overall or is that after you? Uh, I agree in at uh, everything, so we can go overall. That would be it in okay, a, a in large scale, and A in PVE, an S in 1v1, and then an S in aesthetic. Right. So I would put, I mean, yeah, like if I could, I'd say A plus, but I'm going to put it at Yep. A. I agree. All right. Zerker, <laughs> it's time. Let's throw down. Zerker. <laughs> um all right zerker 1v1s i don't even remember what i did last time but i'm pretty sure i'm dropping it from where i was that 1v1s i'm gonna put zerker at a b maybe an a minus and the reason is is because I, I think now the average player has gotten to a point where they just kind of know how to deal with Zerkers in 1v1. So unless the Zerkers really, really good, it's hard for a Zerker to capitalize on the more popular classes like Ninja, Kuno, Sork, um, Tamer, like even DKs um, don't mind fighting Zerkers. So I'm going to put their 1v1s, I don't know, pro probably a, a, a B, as weird as that sounds. Um, they're large scale, I'm gonna give them an A because their utility is just really, really fucking good. Uh, they're super usable, their alt is great, their Q buff is really great, and if they know how to play, they can stay in the back line as long as their guild is pretty good and can stay back there with them and protect them, they still can be mildly useful. Uh, but the alt and Q buff are actually so good. And in large scale, like Siege or with long uh, respawn timers, you, you basically get to use Q buff 
and or your alt every fight, especially if people are feeding you. So, um, in that regard. And then for aesthetics, I give it a, a, a solid C. It's uh, ugly. It's hard to look at. <laughs> um, the cannon looks cool, but outside of that, I, I think literally everything else looks kind of disgusting. It was bad. You forgot a uh, PVE. Oh, PVE, I've given an A. I think Zerker is good basically everywhere. Berserkers can grind efficiently everywhere they want to grind. They're decent in Sakraya, they're decent at Star Star's End, they're great at Aquaman, great at Histria. Um, I'm sure in the new place they're gonna be good too, so yeah. I think I think Zerker's an A for PvE. And their sustainability is nice too. Yeah. So two things I disagree with. Uh, first, obviously, aesthetic. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Berserker. I know the pre-awakening is kind of lame. The only thing that really looks cool, quote unquote, is, you know, I'm doing air quotes, uh, is the heels, you know, the beast roar and stuff like that looks pretty sick, but that's about it. Um, but that awakening, man, I, it's hard to explain to people who don't play Zerker just how fun that awakening is to use. The explosions, the sounds, the feel of it, it, it is a, incredible. It's euphoric, all right? Like, every time I let out an Ancient Wave split shot, and then it just, at that final hit, their health bar drops to zero, I, 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 I come every time, dude, without fail. It's a problem. It is just so amazing. Um, the second thing I disagree with is 1v1. I heavily disagree with you in 1v1s i am not even playing zerker right now and i can still walk into a battle arena and beat most people on my trial zerker like that class is insane at 1v1s it's just kind of the thing that happens when you have four grapples i mean uh it it lacks a little bit in terms of uh, the protection department but what it lacks in protection, I think, it makes up for in CCs. Like, it has, I feel personally, like it has more CCs probably than any other class, honestly. Granted, they're not super easy to hit like some other classes, but the 1v1 potential of Berserker is through the roof, in my personal opinion. And I personally would give Berserker's 1v1 potential an S, so that averages out to an A. So, we have large skill PvP, A, PvE capability, A, and 1v1 capability, A, and then a so you, B+. Plus. So you agree, you agree with large skill? Yeah, I agree with large skill. It's, it's a little lackluster. If I could, I'd give it like an A-, minus because here's the deal. When you don't have your Q buff up and people aren't feeding you rage... Literally until one of those things are up, you're miserable. It's one of the most miserable experiences I've ever had in BDO. Is just waiting for my my Q buff to be up or waiting for me to get 100% BSR in a war as a berserker. There's nothing worse. <laughs> Maybe failing cut accessories. <laughs> That's about it. It's so miserable. You feel so useless. You basically only have a couple of options. You either try and protect your backline which you can't really do because what you're protecting your backline against is all the classes that counter you. Ninja, Kuno, Sork, Lawn. Like these classes that are heavy iframe classes, they counter you heavily. Can't do anything about them. Or I won't say can't do anything, but it's very hard. Or you play as a shitty flanker, which is like, imagine if you were like in a war and then you just like heard this tank like five miles away, driving around the battlefield to come behind you. Like, it's so bad, it's so obvious, everyone can see you coming unless they're just brain dead. It's like, it's so bad. Um, that being said, it is so bad without Q-Buff and ulti, it is so powerful with Q-Buff and ulti. I've been saying forever, I don't think there's a better class in the game at large scale than Zerker with their Q-Buff. Like, I don't think it exists. I think Q-Buff actually even counters PA because you can just keep them on the ground throughout the duration of it. Like, it's so insane. <laughs> yeah, it makes a big difference in big fights. It does. It's huge. So, 
I think I agree. I would give it an A as well for the large scale and the PVE, of course, also an A. If you're a speed hacker, it's S+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, the thing is with the 1v1 is like, I I'm with you. It's, it's just that the classes that are really popular right now that are like the meta just because of how strong they are are all the classes that Zerker just doesn't do great against. Like Ninja, Kuno, Lon, Tamer, Sork. Like those particular matchups are a nightmare for Zerkers if the player is good. So, I mean, and you just see them everywhere now, man. Like there's some guilds in Siege that like the whole makeup is Ninja, Kuno, Sork, you know? Yeah. And I get that. So. I just, I don't know. For my personal experience, like, I'll usually dip into Battle Arena with my Trials like, or maybe, like, once a week and just mess around for, like, 30 minutes to an hour. And I don't know. I, I personally just don't see that big of a difference from, say, like, six months ago. But I don't know. Right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, comes out to A, A, and A. So can we agree that that places Zerker in the A tier? Yeah, Zerker's in A tier. A tier, absolutely. If I... If I if I could fix Zerker, it would be like every Zerker complains about. Like, if they just fixed the bugs, that alone would probably be enough to make Zerkers pretty happy. Yeah. All right. It's a very buggy class. Moving on, Ranger. Oh, yeah, Ranger's hard. I always forget this is a class. <laughs> yeah, um, right? Until you fight Crit. <laughs> and then you're like, oh my god, nerf this class. Um... Ranger, man, I don't know. Ranger is a B basically across the board. The amount of skill it takes to be really high level in 1v1, I think, is a lot. So, for that, if I could get, I guess I'd give it an A in 1v1, a B in large scale, a B in grinding, and aesthetically, I think it's probably a B. It has some cool things about it um, visually that look cool. I like the skill animations a lot in the awakening and i kind of like them in free awakening i generally don't like bows in games but i do think the rangers look really nice i like the the green and the red uh animations uh but yeah large scale it's like tough right because in, in the in the if you isolate one or two people on the edges or on the sides of balls or people trying to flank like rangers take them out really quickly um, if they focus one or two, but when they're shooting into the ball, their damage falls off a lot. And even though they have a melee kit, it's not very good in large scale or node war, particularly. Right. Um, so that's kind of rough. And yeah, I mean, in one v ones, they can defend themselves. Good rangers are actually very hard to fight for everyone, but the man, good rangers are are so rare. They're really, really rare. If I saw more of them, I would give it a higher grade probably. But I just, I don't. They all re the archer. They all re the archer. And then, and then PvE too, it's like they're excellent at Star's End. And then everywhere else, they're just kind of like average or even slightly below average. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'd give it overall probably a B. I agree. I agree across the board. It's uh, it's a hard class. It, uh, I haven't played it, so I don't know for certain. But judging from the things that I know about it, and from what I can see with my eyes, uh, it seems like it's a pretty hard class to really get like really good at. Um, judging by again like so few people playing it, there's really only like what like two or three people I know that are like actual gods at the class. So. It's, uh, they're hard to come by, but if they can pull it off, then they're very, very, very powerful. Honestly, like, a ranger that can pull off what a ranger is capable of is probably the strongest 1v1er in the game, honestly. Yeah, like, ar arguably. I, yeah. I think it's tough against Ninja and Sork because the approachability and they're limited on CCs, but outside of that, like... I don't want to be any other class against an absolute god tier 1v1er, honestly. Yeah. Like, uh, being against crit when you're on a mystic is cancer. <laughs> but again, we're judging these things based off of a, a good player, not a legendary player. So right. we're keeping it at an A for 1v1s. B, B, A, and B. Overall at B. Moving on. Tamer. 
I know you have some different thoughts on this. Yeah, so I've been waffling on this a lot. <laughs> I've been going back and forth because when I so before I played Tamer, well, I all right, so I played Tamer back before the CC changes, and then recently I spent a month playing Tamer, and I was in Vexus at the time, so I was sieging with it every Saturday, and it it didn't feel like it was that bad to me as a flex class. I felt like I could harass. I felt like if I got caught in a 1v1, sometimes a 1v2, I could win those. Um, but like, obviously the main ball is weird, but the, the alt was like insane. Like it just, you're just guaranteed kills every time you have tamer alt. And people will feed you tamer alt if your guild knows what they're doing. If your guild doesn't know what they're doing, they, they won't. They'll be greedy and keep their alt to themselves. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a witch or a ninja, like just give the tamer your alt, dude. You're going to get one or two more kills. The tamer is going to get like 10. So yeah, it's just right? not it's just not worth keeping it. I know if if you can't get kills without your ult, man, like that's a that's a you problem. That ult is a crutch, all right? Give it to tamers. It's going to make a huge difference uh difference in 1v1 or sorry, in large scale. Um and then grinding so grinding is actually a weird thing on tamer. Uh I it's if you're really, really, really geared, it's really good at Star's End and really good at Sacrea. But I think it's not that great at Histria. It's average, maybe even slightly below. Um, and it's it's kind of a lot of uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass to grind on in like history and stuff. I don't know. It's weird. I didn't love grinding on it, I'll say that. It was it was a lot of work and it didn't feel that efficient unless I was at Star's End. And uh, Sacrea didn't really have the DP to do it efficiently, but I've, I've watched <laughs> a few videos of Tamer doing Sacrea with like really high gear and they do really well and get pretty good trash. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of, it's in a weird spot. So it's, it's PvE, I would give it like a B. In lower tier spots, it's crazy because of the trample spam, but in higher tier spots, it's just like average, maybe below. Um, 1v1 is kind of where I'm changing my tune a little bit here. And I just don't think, I in some matchups, Tamer is great, but it's always hard. And in other matchups like Tamer vs. Ninja or Sork or even Kuno sometimes, I just feel like it's really hard for Tamer. Uh, and Archer's not easy either. <laughs> Neither is a good Ranger to fight. So I don't know if I, I don't think I can put Tamer and S at 1v1s anymore. Cause the thing is, is Tamer has a similar issue as, as Rangers. It's like the ones that are still playing it are the legends. And even they're not always crushing everybody in 1v1s. So I'm going to put Tamer's 1v1 at, at an A instead of an S. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. So I would say uh, large scale B, it's just a lesser version of other flex classes, but it's all is really, really good. Um, 1v1A, PVE B, and aesthetically, I actually think Tamer's outfits look sick. I think Tamer's pet is cool. I think Tamer's skill animations look cool. I do wish the Awakened ones were a little bit bigger, but the pre-Awakened and Awakened animations do look nice. So I give aesthetically, I give her an A. Um, overall, I'd probably give her a, make her a B. Okay, so uh, large scale B, I can agree. Uh, PVE uh, B, I can agree. I don't have much to go against that because I never hear about Tamer's grinding experience really. Um, but one v ones, I I still just personally disagree. I know that you've played the class, so I should probably just give way to you on this one. But I seriously, like, tamers just crush most people that they encounter, at least by my experience in 1v1s. Uh, they absolutely do struggle with iframe classes. Uh, join the club. We all are. It's hard. Um, I don't see that as a particular reason to downgrade them from how like mo how much movement they have, how much burst they have, and just how protected they are. They're very protected. 
I don't understand why tamers act like they're they're the most vulnerable class in the game. They have a lot of shit that protects them, a lot of movement. It's very annoying to deal with. So I personally would still put tamers 1v1 at an S. Uh, of course, if we average that out, it averages to an A+. Um, and then I would disagree with you as far as looks go. I think it's a little bland. The Awakening is cool, but again, wish it was bigger. The pet's cool. That's about all that's cool in the pre-Awakening, in my own personal opinion. Averages out to a B plus. So that's just my Dude, personal. That's my personal. Don't, opinion. You don't think Void Lightning looks cool? No, not particularly. Maybe I'm just salty because I play with effects turned off, and every time I fight a tamer, I forget that I need to turn them on. Yeah. But yeah, I, I hate that ability with a passion. Um. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say it actually is busted that 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 the trap doesn't show with effects off. Yeah, you would think it would. You know, like every every class. Yeah, every class has like one or two skills that you still kind of see with effects off, and that should definitely. Be. Yeah, it probably should be. Um. But anyway, so we got B, B, and then A plus. B. Yeah. B. B. It is. B. 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 Tamer's a B. Which I think is, I think last time, didn't we place it in C? I think, maybe? Maybe, yeah. I, I think it's better in large scale than people give it credit for. A lot of people say it's trash in large scale, and I don't agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I might be going against what I said last time. I, I don't remember. We didn't review what we said before we started this, but um, I don't know. They just, like, Maybe this is the warrior in me, right? Trying to play as a, a flank class, and you know it's it's rough out there. But uh, tamers don't seem to have it that bad. I don't know. They they seem more successful than me flanking on a warrior and me flanking on a zerker. Maybe I just suck at flanking. I don't know. Uh, moving on, Valkyrie. I hate this class. <laughs> it's uh, time to I'm make Itex upset. <laughs> I, I love Valkyrie aesthetically. It's another one that I think is one of the cooler classes. I think it's pre-awakening is just a slightly improved version of Warriors pre-awakening visually, but its awakening looks so cool to me. I, I like the shield. I like the lance. I like the yellow color scheme. I like the lightning and the the teleportation and the vacuum looks cool. I think her animations look awesome. So I'm gonna give her aesthetics an A. Her costumes are also really good in this game. She has a lot of cool ones, uh, particularly Enflar looks cool. Although a, a more armored version of Enflar would be <laughs> yeah, cool. Less, right, less skirt, less skirt looking. But that weapon, the shield and lance looks so sick. Um, it's grinding is <laughs> so. It has this weird title of being like one of the best at Sacrea and it's also one of the best at Histria. So I, I have to factor that in, even though I know grinding can be a struggle on the stamina. So I, I'm gonna give its grinding an, uh, an- But you can't really you can't really say Sacrea though, because we're judging off of 269. Yeah, but they're like even good at 269. That's the thing. No way, you're bullshit. Dude, they're, they're so good, but they're so good at Histria. Like, so if at yeah, 269, it, yeah, history is important and they're, they're good at any of the high-end grind spots, basically. Um, I think, I think grinding. I don't know. Like, how much do you weight grinding spots like Gahas or Poly for a class? How important is that? Because at those I mean, spots, I think Valk sucks, but I don't know. Pretty important. I don't know. Okay. So I, I would guess probably, if you're coming I would, up, I would. Yeah, I would probably say like spots like Polys or Gahas are. Honestly, like maybe almost as important as the in-game spots because people coming up right. are going to spend a lot of time there. Right. So the her high end grinding is like an A borderline an S. Her low end grinding is like a B borderline a C. So I, I'd have to give her grinding, I guess, a, a B to be fair because the stamina management is kind of insane. Um. 1v1s I'm gonna give her an A I think in piloted by the right person she's very hard to deal with in 1v1 
Um, she's capable of beating any class, but there are obviously the same ones everyone struggles with that she struggles with. Uh, and she hits super hard. So if you make a mistake, even at lower gear, she can kill you if they know how to do their combos. And then large scale, I mean, yeah, they, they basically just have an alt <laughs> and, and vacuum. They're a vacuum and alter. But even then, if you had to choose between giving your alt to a Valkyrie, a Tamer, or a Zerker, the Valks last. Right. So I'm going to, I'll give her large scale a C. Um, so yeah, I think that was, uh, I'm going to say A, A, C, and A. So I would average her out to a B personally. Just because her large skill is more important. Well, it was C, B, A, and A. C, B, A, and A, yeah. I mean, if I could say C plus or B minus, I would, but I can't. So I'm going to just say B. This is middle of the road. She's going to be behind a lot of A's. Yeah. Um, I think I agree with your rankings of, uh, like, the individual traits, but I don't honestly know if I agree with that placement of the overall ranking. Is is Valkyrie as good of a class as Warrior, Ranger, and Tamer? I don't think it is. <laughs> Wait, you have to, you're wording the question wrong. Is Valkyrie as bad as Warrior, Ranger, and Tamer? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I, I I don't know. I mean, are those classes particularly great? Uh, I just don't know. I mean, those four, I guess those four all belong kind of together, at least relatively close. Yeah, I mean, it's the same rankings that Warrior has, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the Warrior in me. I'm just like, Valkyrie isn't as good as Warrior. Do you ever <laughs> have you ever one v one warrior versus Valkyrie? Um, in my own personal experience, uh, warrior tends to win, but Valkyrie's definitely it's not a one sided fight. Yeah, maybe I put the one. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna amend my one v one to a B, <laughs> actually, because I'm thinking about it like they have a hard time against. A lot. It basically, every class that has a grab. Valkyrie is pretty susceptible. Isn't everyone? Yeah, Aside Valkyrie from is... Ninja Kuno, Sort, Tamer, Lawn. Yeah. I don't know, man. So, I, yeah. I mean, I would give her a. a if I could give her a B minus, I would. I wouldn't be opposed to a C, but I'm just leaving it at a B. I think I agree. I think moving her 1v1 to a B. I don't know. It's between a B and it. it it's between a B and an A for one v one. Like it's really. Uh, it's also hard because whenever you think of Valk, what does your mind immediately go to? Um, exactly. Yeah. So it's like that's kind of like everybody's standard for Valk, and that shouldn't be because he's a god. <laughs> yeah, he's like the best Valk. So, what about like Swidex? Swidex is a he's pretty a, good, he's a Valk, good Valk, and he. Yeah, he's a good Valken. He does pretty well. Yeah, not like amazing, but he does pretty well. I think Swidex. He holds his own. Yeah, I think if I'm thinking Swidex, I'm thinking <laughs> this is gonna sound. Oh, I'm thinking B tier one v one. I think Swidex. I think B. Oh, poor Swidex. <laughs> not you because know. of him as a person, but because of the yeah. class. <laughs> Swidex on a ninja would be probably. <laughs> Okay, so, I don't know. I guess we'll average that out to a B. God, I just don't like it. it. Our next tier list, we got to start allowing us to give B money. Because <laughs> fuck. I just... The Valk needs a B. <laughs> oh, man. I just don't agree with that. I don't agree with putting that on the same level as those other three. I'm going to put it in C for now. Okay. It's a C in large scale, and large scale weighs the heaviest anyway. That's going to be my right. excuse. I'm going to yeah. put it in C. Okay. And then if we're going to revise this whole list, at the end of it, we're going to take a look at it and then make sure that everything looks okay and revise anything that we think looks out of place anyway. So if we think it needs to be moved from there, then we'll do it. But I'm putting this bitch in C because I do not believe it stands par 
with Warrior, Ranger, and Tamer. So overall, C. Deal with it, Itex. He's probably like, it belongs in F. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. Um, Musa, next class. Um, I'm just going to straight up say overall to Nay. I think it is a great flex class. I think it also can do okay in a ball. It pops stun traps. That's very important. Um, it... It's very useful in, in large scale because you can go in and get out. And if you know what you're doing, you can stay alive a long, long time. You can get kills very quickly. It has a decent super armor rotation. So you can just trade, especially a higher gear. Um, so in Siege. Scale. Yeah, yeah. So in Siege, I give it an A. In 1v1s, I also would give it an A. I think it's capable of beating everyone. And it's very hard to catch a good one. Um, in the hands of the right player, I think it's yeah, it, it's capable of beating everyone, which I think is, and I don't think it's like it's not like ranger level complicated not saying it's not hard, because you do have to be good, but, you know yeah, uh, so I would give an A in grinding, I'd give it an A it's top tier at Achman, top tier at Manchums and usable at actually, it's, it's pretty good at Star's End, it's not like the best, but I think it's better at Star's End than it is at Histria. And it's pretty good at Histria, so. Um, grinding also an A. Uh, and then, what else? Aesthetics? Yep. <laughs> the last one. Um, aesthetics, I give it a, a D. I, I think that it's very boring looking. I, I It has almost like the ninja aesthetic, except it's not as cool as a ninja it's a little bit less cool than a ninja i think the fire is boring i think the pre-awakening has no there's nothing inspiring about the pre-awakening kit um its alt is even pretty boring looking it has a boring looking alt i don't know i just think it's a very boring yeah i don't even like its costumes man so <laughs> i'm putting its aesthetics at a d and overall though the class would give it an a heavily disagree i would give aesthetics an a um the pre-awakening is boring i'll give you that the only ability that i think is really like fun to use and really aesthetically pleasing is the uh flow to rising storm i think it's called rising storm blaze that ability is really fun and really uh nice to look at really uh really good ability but that's like the only one the pre-awakening but the awakening man that thing is so fun to just like mess around with musa has always been my go-to class that like it's a class that i would never make you would never catch me dead playing that shit in node war because it's just not my type of play style for like pvp but you can find me grinding it some random place on my musa like a lot <laughs> like i love grinding on it it's so much fun the uh all the spinning shit very fun to do um i, I don't know it's just a very very fun awakening to use cross crusher and then uh i believe it's called foul play if i remember correctly i think uh the flow to cross crusher no no super oh, yeah, fun. yeah yes super super fun <laughs> one of the most satisfying abilities in the game honestly um right that's the only if i did play musa in node wars that would be the only reason is to walk up behind a group of people or dash dash up behind a group of people and then crust crusher them foul play in the back and just watch them all like evaporate it, it incredible um i also disagree on the 1v1 i think it's 1v1 is a b and the reason why i think it's a b is because i think personally i believe mooses have trouble catching people i think it's a very real issue they kind of struggle um to catch people they pretty much just have their stomp and their stub arrow like i think that's the only two like reliable quick ccs that what, they have which what stomp are you referring to are you talking about cross crusher the first no 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 no, no 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 the moose stomp that stuns Oh, no, 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 no. Dude, first of all, Musa Shout is so good. Musa is. Shout is basically beheading. It's basically beheading. But it's got a pretty long um, cooldown. So Musa Shout's good. 
It has a decently long cooldown. Dragon Bite is insane. It's a really, really fast forward guard stun guard. that just is 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 quick. It is forward guard, I promise. Dragon Bite is forward guard. They have a they have a protected CC. Do not ever let a Musa tell you they have no protected CCs. They have Dragon Bite. I'm about to go check stun. right now. You're about to get fat check checked it out. on 100%. camera. Dude, I, I get yelled at by Brosiden all day, every day. <laughs> I know, I know. Dragon Bite has also. Sammy was playing it for a while, like on a trial. So, um, and they also have. I mean, the arrow is. They don't just have the arrow. The arrow is a pretty good catch, um, it is. especially on good mooses that like they're waiting for you to do an opening or waiting for you to do something. So, for example. Um, Hey, it probably doesn't happen on the charge skills on Zerker or Warrior, but like on Sork, when you're charging, uh, charging Grim Reaper's Judgment, they can actually just catch you with the arrow. They wait for you, they wait for oh, you, they wait for it, for it, catch you. It's forward guard. They need to stop complaining. It also kind of juts you <laughs> forward a little bit, but they'll poke you and get you with that shit because it's so fast sometimes. Yeah. And then on top of that, those are like four pretty decent catches. I think Crest Crusher. So, eh, I mean, you don't no, want to spam it. You don't it. use that to catch. You don't. Use yeah, it. but but some do, like a lot do. I mean, basically every Musa does. I don't think it's that bad. I just think you have to use it wisely. It's like I one of those bad. like, no, nah, there's calculated risk to it. Like you you can use it if you know what you're doing. You just can't spam it every time, which is what bad Musas do. Like, but you can use it occasionally. So I think they have. Decent enough catches for what the rest of their kit is, which is basically an SA trade, super fast moving, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. So, in one v one, man, I, I I think good mooses are actually hard to beat. Like really, really hard to beat. Even on a one of these classes that is OP, like on a Sork versus Musa or a Ninja versus Musa, those fights tend to go forever, and it's very, very possible for either of the players to make a mistake and cause the other to win. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, right? I'm viewing this matchup through the eyes of a couple classes. Those classes mm -hmm. are Berserker, okay. which is a pretty hard matchup for Musa, in my opinion. Um, I know Shaky Base said that he felt like it was pretty even. I think it slides in Zerker's favor. Uh, Warrior, which is just straight up a hard counter to Musa. Uh, Witch and Wizard. Which both are probably at a slight disadvantage, but not much, because you just super armor spam and kill them. So it's like, I personally, the only Musa I think I have ever really gotten my ass handed to me by is Grim. That's literally it. No other Musa has actually like thoroughly kicked my ass in 1v1. No one. Not a single one. It's a challenge out there, Liquid 1 1 2. You know? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, of the mooses I fought, and I fought a bunch, and I'm not even saying that all the mooses I fought are shit. They're good mooses. But, like, I've never. I've just never struggled against one, and I've never gotten my hand, my, my, my ass handed to me, except for Grim, who is a god. So it's like. Yeah. I, in my opinion, the 1v1 is a B. That's fair enough, but uh, I'm sticking to my guns. I think it's an Okay, averages out to B+. Plus. So, uh, and I agree with the large scale and the PV. Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly on both of those. We got A, A, B+. Plus. So, A? Yeah. A goes. It's an A class. You can't go wrong picking Moose in this game. You can't, as much as they complain. <laughs> And arguably, if you start with Musa, you're going to gear up faster than basically everyone. Because at the low tier spots... Oh, well, mistake. Yeah, but I still think Musa... I mean, Musa's just faster. Yeah. I, I mean, like, Gaha... Yeah, but Mystic is, like, right behind him, and she's better at high-end spots. So, I don't know. We'll get well. there. Maywa. Uh, Time to make Nayashi proud or upset. Take, take, take everything I said about Musa and give it one <laughs> less grade, except for uh, one v one. I also think Maywa is an A. Um, so large scale, it's it's one of the worst flex classes because 
you have to 1v1 at most 1v2. Like PVX is, or 1vx is very hard on a Mewa, I think, even for great Mewas. Um, even though I had Nayashi murking with us the other day against Filter, and he was clapping the ninjas, dude. But um, that's uh, yeah, that's a different level. So. I, uh, yeah, I think in large scale, it's probably a, a C. And I, I really think that it only needs like one thing to move it up to a B or a B plus, And that's like a quality, decent cooldown super armor trade skill that that isn't like spammable, but at least usable. So you can go in and poke just for damage and nothing else and then get out something reliable um, to make it more like a Musa. Right now, it just doesn't have that. So in large scale, I'm gonna, I'm putting it at C. Um, in one v ones, I'd give it an A. In PVE, I'm gonna give it an A because I think it's, I think it's pretty much just good everywhere now. Um, the spots that it used to be bad at are spots with like where the mobs are really spread out, like Fogans or Sassans, you know. But Gahas and Polly. The mobs are so tightly packed. Mewa can hit the whole pack. Um, at Histria, Achman, uh, Sakreya, and Star's End, you pack, you get the ball or the the mobs to ball up. So I think she's very good there. She's actually really good at Histria, like really, really, really good at Histria and Sakreya. So I would also give her an A for grinding. And then uh, I guess that's it. Aesthetically, I, I'd give her a, a B. She has the same problem as Musa in pre-awakening. She has the same problem with Musa in her outfits. Although she at least has like one outfit that I really like. I don't know the name of, although let me actually, I need to get the name of it because it's the only one I actually like. Um, what is this one? It's like the colorful looking one. It's called Peach Blossom. I think that outfit is pretty cool. Uh, and then her awakening looks freaking awesome though. I think her awakening skills look really, really nice. It's just funny that none of her, <laughs> she's an ice based class that has no freeze abilities. Which is yeah, funny. right. Um, yeah, I'm in agreement across the board with all of this. Um, you mean Peach Blossom? <laughs> no, I actually like some of the other uh, Maywa costumes. I personally like both Musa's and Maywa's awakening outfits, I think they're really cool. I like the uh, the effects on the hand. I think it's really cool. The flaming hand with yeah. the Musa, and then the uh, like frozen one with the Mewa. I think it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, so I'm in agreement across the board. So that puts it at C, A, and A. So yeah, I guess that puts her. I think a uh, uh, B. A B, a B or a C, depending on how we weigh these things. A B or a B minus. If I could B minus, I'd B minus. That's another one of those. Like, yeah, I, th I think good. May I mean, Maywas aren't running around with zero kills in Nodorn Siege. It's just frustrating for them how difficult it can be. And if you are in a one B X situation, you're kind of boned. You have to basically just run away. And one of the things with Moose Maywa, while their escapability is great. But if three people are chasing you, it's it's not great. Eventually, you'll run out of stamina. Um, whereas Musa can kill one or two of the people and then run away. <laughs> and you're only one run away from one. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I would be happy with a, a C plus or a B minus if possible. So Yeah, but we don't. So B or C, what are we thinking? I'm thinking, I, I think B. I think B is fine. Be as fun. Now, was it not? Was the scale not like if you rate it overall as a a C and I rate it overall as a B, then it ends up a somewhere in the middle? Yeah, but I'm trying to be more consistent. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm averaging the uh, individual ratings, mm -hmm. right? And okay, then, so with the average, it's coming out to a B. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, that it, works. we don't have an exact calculator for how right. much we're weighing these things, right? And then again, it also comes down to, like, we give Valka a C and we give Maywa a C. Does this mean they're exactly the same in terms of their large-scale capabilities? No. But it means that, you know, they're close enough uh, to warrant being in the same category. So... Right. But, uh... Yeah, the overall grade being a B is fair because it is good in 1v1s, it is good in PvE. 
and it looks cool <laughs> and it's a fun to play class like people that play it love playing the class they just don't like large scale so. and most importantly Nayashi plays Maywall so if you're playing Maywall and you want to know how to play Maywall how to become a better Maywall there's literally I don't know if there's another class in the game that has as good of a content creator and a like a master of the class that is more than happy to teach other people how to play it than Nayashi on Maywall honestly there is one I do have one that I want to give a shout out to who is it that's as good not necessarily better but as good that loves this class and is willing to help people is General Morris Salandris the archer like that dude is the nicest coolest guy ever and if even if you're the biggest noob ever he will sit and be with you for 30 minutes even if he doesn't know you and try to help you out yeah. which I think is cool as fuck and he makes videos and stuff so all right next up it's time it's time for ninja all right ninja it's time to make all the ninjas mad at us i don't think so. i don't think they'll get mad all right so one v one i think ninjas are in denial i think most ninjas are in denial about how overpowered it is i don't think so i think they're i think they feel it i think they feel it in their KDs, I think they feel it <laughs> in their grind spots that they take from people. I think they feel it. Dude. Um, so one v one, it's an S for me. It's a clear S up there with Sork. Uh, it, it's just for anyone that's new to BDO, it's it has a lot of movement. Um, even the unprotected movement, like murderous intent, is very very good because it's so fast and moves you a pretty good distance. Um, uses no stamina, has a really short cooldown. Um, and then its protected movement is very, very good as well. You can keep frontal guards up for a very long time. It has uh, decent iframes and it's got a ton of really quick CCs. And uh, yeah, so it's 1VX is very good. It's 1v1 is very good. So I give it an S and 1v1s in large scale. I mean, it's a flex class that does well as in its role i think it it's up there with musa as they're both like those are the two best flex classes like straight up i believe so it, it's not s because it's not that level but it, it is an a i think in large scale you still want good ninjas the problem is is like if you have a really bad ninja they're they're basically useless <laughs> so you got to be good so know that when i'm giving it an a it's based on like you got to be pretty good at the class and know what you're doing otherwise you're not going to get anything done in large scale but yeah um and then pve it's probably a b it's a little bit tedious to grind with it's very good in the lower tier spots it's okay it's like mediocre average in Histria. Um, it's okay. I was grinding a Star's End actually recently. It's it's pretty decent in Star's End. Not great, but not bad. And it's pretty good in Aquaman as well. Uh, Sakura I haven't tested and I haven't really heard any Ninja's opinions on it, so I don't know how good it is in Sakura, but I'm assuming not great. Um, so it's grinding, I'd, I'd give it like a B. And uh, aesthetically, I give it, uh, I'd probably give it a B. I think it has a couple cool costumes. The skill animations look pretty cool. No, I'll give it an A. Aesthetically, it looks pretty damn cool. The skill animations look neat. The costumes are pretty good. Uh, yeah, I give it an A. Aesthetically, it's nice. Although I hate that it has to be muscular. It kind of annoys me. <laughs> it, like the the player model is like big and bulky, and you can't change it. It's like always big and bulky. I was wearing, you know, my favorite jester outfit. Yep. It actually makes me look like I just had two Big Macs. Even at the lowest <laughs> setting. Like I, I set my like my character to tall with like the thinnest body possible and it still looks like I just fucking waft down like scarf down two cheeseburgers. <laughs> so I don't like that. But yeah. Um so I give it an A aesthetically. So overall I give the class an A. It's an A class. It's an S tier class in a weird way because of how just how good the one v ones are, and how frustrating it can be for everyone else. Same with Sork, but in large scale, being weighted so heavily, it it is a flex class, and it's the best at being flex. 
but I can really only give it an A because it's not like what's your you, wizard? Yeah, or... if you have a great, if you have a great, if Black Rose had no ninjas at all, they would still be winning all of their sieges. <laughs> so um, yeah. Also, I didn't complete my thought from earlier. I don't think so. Hmm. The I'm I'm averaging the individual scores. But also, it's like if I disagree with you on where the final placement should go, and we just can't come to agreement on one way or the other, then that's where the pluses come in handy. Got it. Okay. That's that's what I was going to say, but I think we kind of tapered off somewhere. So if you look at this, you know, these three scores and say no, that absolutely goes in B, and then I look at those three scores and say, oh no, that absolutely goes in C, then it goes into C plus. Make sense? Got it. So. But uh, yeah, the, my hope was that in averaging the individual scores, we could reduce that a little bit and also make ourselves a little bit more accountable to what we're looking at in terms of uh, where things should be placed. But yeah, uh, anyway, with Ninja, I agree across the board. Um, really strong large skill potential. It's the strongest flex class in my opinion, bar none. I don't think Musa is even comparable, honestly. Um, although I can... I'm willing to hear the argument. Um, the PVE seems fine. I know they all complain, but it doesn't seem bad. It just seems tedious and annoying. Still seems like it can grind just fine. And then the 1v1, I mean, it it's probably the best 1v1er in the game right now. So it's either Ninja or Sork. And I would probably argue Ninja over Sork. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, a little, yeah. little powerful. Little powerful, little oh, powerful. So I, I would say for the for the one v one, I would put it on the average to above average player. Ninja on average is a little bit better than Sork in one v one, but if you were to take the best ninja in the game versus the best Sork in the game, which I'm just gonna go ahead and say is a, is Amora, I don't think Ninja. No, wins. Sork crushes him. But we're yeah. not comparing the best on though. average. Yeah, I want to see it show match Amora. Find the best ninja. Let's do them. <laughs> or we can have a proxy match. We can do like Messiahless versus Good Vibes guy. There you go, <laughs> Kuno. Uh, well, wait, what was your over so your overall for Ninja was an A as well? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Does Ninja frustrate you? Oh. Let's not get into that. Mine wasn't so bad the other day, right? Being the noob ninja. Well, it felt less bad because I also don't know what I'm doing on the class that I'm currently on. Right. So yeah, it's it, hard to be mad when you're still learning. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's not like I've been playing this class for like five months and I'm like super frustrated. It's like, well, yeah, of course that happened. I don't know what I'm fucking doing. So. Right. But uh, okay. let's just say it's not a fun time when I'm playing Zerk. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. You said Kuno. Kuno. It's time. Kuno. Kunoichi. This uh, class all right, is so broken. It's S tier. Nerf spin spree. <laughs> so Kuno got a buff since our last time we did this. Um, they got a few buffs, but most of them didn't do much. But the significant one was the spin spree change, where. Actually, it was it was a couple changes, which I'm wondering if why that's why the damage seems so insane. They fixed a bug where sometimes special attacks weren't happening when you use spin three. Uh, so I think their damage has become a little bit more consistent. And then on top of that, they made it where if you hold L and B after using spin three, it'll spin one more time. Um, so or it'll extend the spin 66 percent i forget the exact number of hits i think it goes from 12 to 20 or something so yeah and it's a super armor skill that does damage and heals you on hit and it heals you a significant amount it's not a small amount so yeah that change was significant so uh large scale i think before i had kuno pretty low i'm gonna put kuno in large scale at a at a b um, because I still don't think it's as good as Ninja, even though that's a super armor skill. The role that Kunos are playing is it, it improved their PVX a lot, and it improved their 
um, being an assassin and getting in, killing someone, getting out safely a lot. Um, but its movement is still not as good. It can move, but it's not as protected as Ninja and so on and so forth. So, yeah, uh, I would give it a B in large scale. 1v1s, I give it an A, a solid A. I think it's capable of beating everybody. It, I just think that the Archer matchup is very hard for it because of the way its movement works. And then um, grinding, like that's the funny thing, is that patch, that PvE patch is supposed to help grinding a lot. And I do think it helped a little bit, but I don't think it brought it up to anywhere near like the top end of things. I think it's still pretty middle of the road in that regard, personally. Uh, so I would put it's grinding at a B still. And aesthetically, I think it's one of the coolest looking classes in the game. It's pre awakening, it's weapon, it's costumes. It has some cool costumes. Uh, everything looks pretty cool on that class. So I would give it's, its aesthetics an A. Uh, overall, eh, fuck. Overall, I'd give it an A. I think it's more useful than those shitty B tier classes. Yeah? Well, you're going to be disappointed because uh, looking at these numbers, that does not come out to an A. Uh, right. So I actually disagree yeah. with 1v1. I think 1v1s, they're, they're, they're really powerful. They're up there with the greats at the moment, in my own personal I opinion. I said A. Oh, you think it's S? I think it's S in 1v1. In 1v1. I think it is S up there. I think it's S with Sork, Ninja, Zerker. Like, it is very... It's with Sork and Ninja. I, I, in my personal opinion, yes. Like, right now, it is insane. Um, I get that their movement is, like, not as good as Ninja's. But uh, they're doing just fine. <laughs> they're still so oppressive in 1v1. It is, like, honestly so hard to deal with. And keep in mind, like everything I'm saying is through the viewpoint of mostly Zerker, little bit of Warrior, tiny, tiny bit of Wizard and Witch. Because when I was playing Wizard and Witch, I did hardly any 1v1s. Mostly Zerker. Like, this class is insane. Not as insane as Ninja, granted. But do I think that it is so farther down below Ninja that it goes down a tier? No. I think it's trailing behind it a little bit, not by much. It's probably around the same amount of 1v1 potential as, like, Zerker, in my opinion. Falling just below Sork and uh, Ninja. So, that's my own personal opinion on that. I'm sure everyone's going to disagree with me. <laughs> so, you're saying 1v1 is S tier. Where do you put its large scale? Uh, I think large scale is B is fine. Um... It seems to just not perform as well as uh, Musa and Ninja. Um, yeah, it's just kind of that second rate flex classes, right? You have the first rate, which is Ninja and Musa, and you have the second rate, which is like fucking uh, Kuno might be there alone, actually. No, I'd probably put Lon there too, yeah. maybe. Maybe yeah. Lon? I think Kuno's close. I think Kuno is close. It's just not quite. Yeah, and then you have the third rate, which is like sort of uh fucking uh tamer probably in my opinion anyway i want to real quick i want to i forgot to address you said that you'd be willing to hear the argument between moose and ninja and i forgot to address that i think one of the main things is that if you're let's say your your goal is to stop a, a rebuild right which is what ninjas and mooses are sent to do so as a ninja, you have an advantage because you get to go in a concealment and completely surprise people. And so if they're not rotating skills, you're very likely to get in, blow up a structure they're rebuilding and get out, right? Or at least kill some people. Um, Musa can't conceal, but they can walk directly through stun traps and pretend they're not there. And which means against a good guild that's putting up stun traps to prevent ninjas from coming in mooses can still just go and pop all the stun traps for the ninja and still blow up a building and get out so i, I would say that is one of the reasons moose is pretty good as flex like at least as good as ninja personally. yeah but see you're also not weighing like the other side of defense which is personnel so like i remember back in the day whenever we had the zerker squad in hex 
one of the things that we did is we would devote like half our people to defense a lot of times. So we would literally have like three or four Zerkers just sitting around the fucking base, like waiting for these little ninjas and fucking Kunos and Musas and Mewas to come running up. And a Musa is a lot easier to grab than a ninja or a Kuno. Like, even without a stun trap, because you know what they're going for. So literally what you just do every time is you go, oh, there's a Musa coming in from the north. And then you just go stand right next to the fucking structure that they're going to go try and blow up. And then right when they come up and they try and crust crusher, you just grapple them because your grapple's protected. It's literally 100% yeah. guaranteed every time. But you have to have been in the only guild on earth that would put three zerkers on defense <laughs> well <laughs> so. we had so many of them do you remember how many zerkers i had in that party i can't remember what, how many well i think at our most we had like uh seven or eight so right. i would literally leave like two or three zerkers back for defense and then send the other like four to five or whatever on offense and to just keep pushing with the ball basically but like we had to do that because well I mean, I guess I can get into it. The uh, <laughs> Our defense was, like, so ineffective at stopping flex teams at that time. Like, we had defense personnel, but, like, nothing against anybody who was on defense at that time. But they were so bad at preventing enemy flex teams from stopping the rebuilds. Like, they just couldn't do it. And yeah. I remember just war after war after war, we just could not get rebuilds up. So what I would do every time is if it, we were in a really desperate situation, I would bring back everybody. Most of the time I only brought back like a couple people and we would just sit there. And then magically, as soon as the Zerker squad is there, things get rebuilt. It's so strange. <laughs> but anyway, that's whatever. But uh, and then aesthetically, I also disagreed. Uh, you put it at an A. I think I'd put it at a B. Uh, Kuno? Yeah. I, again, yeah. just personal taste. Like, the spin spree mm. is a cool ability. Uh, that's basically it, as far as awakening. Well, uh, Delighted Blast looks so cool. Eh. Chain Crash, which you don't use anymore, looks cool. I like... Even Wheel Wrath looks cool. Like I like the one where you roll the tire down the hill. Yeah, <laughs> Delighted Blast. So, it... That one's frustrating for a lot of people, because... <laughs> You don't see it, and it pops. So it's B, B, and then A plus. What are we thinking? Uh. Do I? I mean, I, I, I would say, fuck. I don't know. I mean, I guess like I'd be happy with a B plus or an A or whatever, because it's not exactly a B at all. I think it's better than the B classes, so it, it's probably an A. Uh, is yeah. that your final decision? Yeah, it's probably it's probably an A. That's, I'll stick with an A. I'll go with an A. All right, it's going in B plus. I disagree. I think it's B. Okay. So, which should we just slap these both in S and then move on about our day? <laughs> well, they got also since our last. Uh, talk they got uh pve buffs which is where they were yeah, lacking air quotes pve buffs <laughs> <laughs> yeah air quotes pve buffs um uh yeah so let's just break it down here i think in large scale they're s they're the most important class they have big aoe's a lot of protection a lot of super armor keep in um, mind we're doing which first right a lot of super armor a lot of frontal guard really really nice uh <laughs> nice support uh, arguably the best support class in the game uh, high damage which is and... sad now that there's an actual support class out <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah S tier in large scale I think in 1v1s it's probably a, a C I think really really good which is can make it look like a B um but the average witch is is just getting grabbed, and then uh, I think in PVE it's, it's witches are gonna hate me for this, but I think in PVE it's an A because I mean history is like the average, I mean the spot that like everyone goes 
at the high end. And one, once you get to the gear we're talking about, it's it's as good, if not better, than every other class there. Um, its sustainability is obviously great. It's pretty decent in spots like Poly and all that. It's not as fast as like Moose or anything like that, but it's still pretty good. I don't know. I, I'd give it grinding an A. 1v1's a C, large scale an S, and then aesthetically, I think it has some of the cooler costumes. Visually, the lightning looks really cool. The earth looks really cool. So I'd give it uh, an A aesthetically as well. Um, so overall, it's uh, pro probably S just because it's important. Yeah. The other, well, let me, the other let thing me, is like let me you, do mine you, first before you go all overall. Right. Okay. Calm down. All right. All right. Jump all right. in the gun. Right. Uh, I disagree with you on 1v1. Okay. I think my experience on which really opened my eyes to a lot of things about the class on paper the class really doesn't look good at 1v1s it's not as bad as people think i really I can, do believe yeah. that i can agree um it's really not that bad like if you're able to rotate your protections properly this is assuming you're not fighting some 285 AP monkey, right? If you're able to rotate your protections properly, and you're able to make use of all the buffs that are given to you, like, there's so much potential in that class for a 1v1. Now, is it still <laughs> arguably the lowest, well, second lowest for a 1v1? Yes, but is it, like, impossible is it really, really hard? Like, I think I was... I, I'm pretty sure I almost said exactly that in our last tier list. I said, yeah, you can 1v1 people as a witch, but it's really, really hard. Um, it's not... It's not that hard. Meteor is one of, if not the most OP ability in the game. So, yeah, that's kind of my feelings on it. Now, uh, I'm not going to put it high in 1v1s, because again, I think it is not good in 1v1s. Like, it's not like A tier, but I think it's, uh, I think it's B tier for 1v1s, honestly. Okay. I really do. And I know that's going to be super controversial, and everybody's going to get mad, and you're all going to re at me, but, like, I'm not particularly amazing at this game. Like, I'm pretty good. I would probably say I'm a little bit above average, but I ain't a god. And I kicked Piotr's ass. So, I don't know. That's all I'm gonna say about <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did kick Piotr's ass, but I also outgeared him because he was on a trial character and I wasn't. So, <laughs> it was unfair. <laughs> but, no, it, I don't know. It, I just don't think it's, uh, I don't know. Meteor is broken. Uh, the catch lightning is broken. It's on like a... First of all, it's spammable for damage for people who like to just sit back and do nothing. Second Which of all, one? the catch lightning. I, I, I don't know the actual name of it. I just call it catch lightning. Forward F. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, detonative flow. Yes, thank you. I never remember the name of it. I just call it catch lightning. Um, <laughs> like, it's the lightning that you catch with, Frosty. Right, what do you want yeah, from I me? got you. I got you. Um, it's spammable for damage if people are just playing like super safe for whatever reason, and it's on like such a low cooldown. Like honestly, it, it's on a very low cooldown for the uh, for what it does. Like honestly, um, and then also the buff that you didn't mention that I'm pretty sure they got after our last tier list was Voltaic. Mm -hmm. I don't think you touched on that, but Voltaic is now Sanic. Literally. It's so fast. It's it's the single best it's the single greatest PvP skill in the game. Yes. Well, I might yes. still argue Meteor, but No, I think well I man, would be open for debate. At least Meteor has an animation that you can see their arms going up. I don't know, man. I guess Voltaic kind of does too. I don't know, man. I, I think I, it's 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 one is one, the second is two. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> um, and we're not counting PA, by the way. That's not because it's different. It's not right. It's support. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. PVP ability. Um. Because yeah, that's yeah. it. 
bounds you. <laughs> it it does the most damage of of like any of their skills, and yep. it gives you an evasion debuff, so that way everyone else can do the most damage as well. And it's fast as fuck, boy. And it's fast now, especially with speed spell or sages. It's like, yeah, it, it's so quick. It's ridiculously quick. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I'd put it at a B for one v one personally. So that puts it at uh, large scale S, a PVE A, and one v one C plus aesthetic of A. Where do we think this goes? I mean, I still think it's an S tier class, um, partly because it's so important for a guild to survive. You have to have wizards and witches and um, which aesthetically is more pleasing than wizards. So that's <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think the one thing that, because I remember specifically that we, uh, oh, my Borderlands buddy's getting off for the night. Feels bad. Um, I think the. That's his cat. That's his cat for those people. <laughs> I think the one thing that kept it out of S last time was the fact that the PVE wasn't super good and the 1v1 wasn't super good. And now both of those things are better and they didn't touch the large scale at all. So, uh, yeah, I agree. That's well, if anything, they, they buffed the large. Scale. Yeah. If anything, even if only slightly, they buffed it as well. So moving on, we got wizard, very similar situation, but not quite. Yeah. I mean, it, it got some buffs as well. Um, wizards use, so starting with large scale, wizards use Aqua Jail. Aqua Jail got the evasion debuff. Um, whether you like the skill or not, it's still a damage dealing ability. It has a massive AoE and you have super armor during it, especially if you have PA, you have a second to rotate it. And now it also debuffs everyone it touches. Um, they gave it, they gave uh, a little AP buff to using Hellfire, which is a uh, I, I don't know what to make of that. It helped PvE a lot. It's minimal change PvP, I think. Um, they improved Aqua Jail a bit. Um, it still has issues, but it's better than it was before. It's somewhat viable now. I, I do think you should use it in certain situations. Just it's not a spammable skill. And the rest of the skills are still really good. Uh, the one difference that's major to me between Witch and Wizard is, and while I don't think Wizard's alt is very good, I think it's at least usable and the Witch's is just not. So um, yeah, I also put Wizard at an S in large scale. I also think Wizard, in, a, in this weird way, Wizard actually has a better ranged combo than Witch because of the Revamp Fireball thing and the fact right. that water, water Sphere is spammable off cooldown. So, so is Detonator Flow. Yeah, but Detonator Flow doesn't do the damage of Water Sphere. What? Mm. No. I think Water Sphere hits way off. I don't know enough to say no to that, but I think they're um, very similar. Maybe, but... No, nah, I've never been killed by detonated flow. It just floats me. It doesn't kill me. Water sphere. <laughs> it's, always <laughs> it's always voltaic. It's always voltaic. It's always voltaic. Let me check. I'll check. Um, yeah, I think the super armor, like awakened super armor, like gore roll, has some range, and so does thunderstorm. But they're not really ranged, you know. But the fireball thing is real. Revamp fireball is. Yeah, it's also unprotected. But go on. Yeah, but it's fast, dude. It's so fast. But you're not going to use or... that in a group. That's, yeah, you, yes, you, well, not if you're in the group, but like leading up to the group or after the initial animation, you can back out and still pick people off on the sides. It's pretty good. There's actually a lot more wizards that use it so nowadays than you. Write this down in Discord so I don't forget, please. Okay. So, detonative flow, the hit damage is 878% times 5, accuracy rate plus 30%, maximum of 10 targets, 40 MP recovery on hit, floating, and air attack. I would very much like to see Let me know if I need to repeat that. Nope, got it. And then I will swap to wizard and we will see... 
This is for science. This is for science. So we're gonna make sure we we're gonna make sure our claims are substantiated. Damn it. <laughs> also, one of them has a flow; the other does not, which I think is important. Well, it does. Wizard does have a flow. It's just on the, a different Wiz ability. No, I'm talking about the wizards. Water sphere has a really oh, hard hitting flow. Oh, you're comparing these abilities. I thought you were comparing the classes. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, no, uh, yeah, yeah. The wizard's water sphere also has yeah, flow. Yeah, but I don't think the flow is spammable, no, it's but it's not. still it's hard. So the water sphere is eight seventy eight times five, thirty percent accuracy buff, maximum ten targets, forty MP recovery on hit, knockdown, and air attack. So the only thing that's difference between that's different between this and detonative flow is this knocks down while detonative flow floats. And? Well, and the... Uh, uh, and the, the flow. Uh, flow. Which yeah. is huge. What's the flow do? The... Which one is it? Aqua Bomb. Aqua Bomb. Yeah, 1,049 damage times 5, critical hit rate plus 50%, plus 10% accuracy rate, maximum 10 targets, down attack, air smash, down smash. But here's the thing, if we're going to start comparing flows, then let's compare all the fucking flows. I, no, 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 I'm just talking about ranged. I, I was particularly talking about ranged. I'm not saying one class is better than the other. I was saying that I actually believe Wizard is a little bit stronger at range. You can, like, poke from far away or combo someone. I mean, Wizards kill me from far away, just straight up. They just will stay ranged and do the entire range yeah. combo on me. Like the MMA, you know, that's that's all I was saying. I wasn't saying that this flow is better than the flow to Voltaic Pulse or whatever. I'm not getting into that. All right? I was just saying at range. I think it's slightly better at range. Anyway, the overall point is Wizards also S. <laughs> like, uh, it, has a, it has a grab. I, I don't even really know if it's much better in 1v1. I guess so because the range pressure... So maybe it is. So I'd probably give it a B in 1v1 instead of the C that I gave the witch. Um, but everything else I think is the same. Wizard actually pulls slightly, like 1% more trash basically everywhere than witch, I think. Maybe it's the opposite. I forget. I'm not going to make that claim. I take that claim back because now <laughs> I think I have them mixed up. Um, but they're damn close in PvE. So, um, yeah, just ov overall, I I'm just going to jump straight to Wizard deserves um, S tier as well because it's the same important, same support. Oh, you forgot aesthetic. Aesthetically, I, I think it's disgusting. I think it has no good looking costumes. I, eh, no, no, I, yeah, I'm sticking to that. Cause even the costumes that are good on it, that look really cool on Warrior, look really dumb when you're holding up two spheres. Cause it looks like you're about to serve a table, like you're holding up <laughs> cups. So I, I don't love it. Like seeing someone in like a Gavi Regan, like sick cape. And then it's like, here are your drinks, sir. Like you look like you work at the, um, <laughs> Like, like, uh, you you know those those shows that do like the jousting, the little jousting shows in Vegas, like one of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like di you get a chicken dinner and jousting. Well, That's so what would you rank it? I, I would give it a C in aesthetics. And a C. Okay, so that averages yeah. out to B plus. It's some bullshit, dude. Because <laughs> I would give it an S, and here's why: Wizard has some of the most satisfying abilities in the game to use. I think Hellfire is the single most fun and satisfying ability to use in the game. And I literally wanted to kill myself when they made it to where you can't use it in large scale PVP. Please make Hellfire great again. Thank you. Um, yeah. Everything else- It needs Frontal Guard back and remove the stiff. Please take away the stiff and dude, please. Dude, if they take away... That's literally why I rerolled off of Wizard. Do you know that? Did I tell you that? Why I rerolled no. off of Wizard and on the Witch? Back on the Witch, rather? I literally was like, dude, I'm going to play Wizard. Because I'm going to play what I enjoy playing. And then I played it for like two weeks. And I literally kept killing myself because I wanted to use Hellfire. And I was like, I, have, I can't play this class right now. Like, I'm literally suiciding into groups into people in 1v1s and occasionally into mobs because I keep using 
this garbage ass ability because it's my favorite ability in the game and they made it so terrible. So right. make Hellfire great again, please. I don't I don't think that animation looks that cool. I think Bolide looks way cooler. Bolide so is also Aqua, awesome. Aqua Trail. Bolide, all of the yeah. fire skills for Wizard are incredible. Hellfire is amazing. Yeah. Cataclysm is amazing. I don't understand why they buffed Voltaic, but didn't buff Cataclysm, but okay. Uh, and uh, Bolide is just, like, visually one of the most incredible abilities in this game, honestly. Especially yeah. the ultimate. I, Especially the ultimate. I do think um, uh, Chilling Wave, even though it's not, like, a great skill, I visually I think it looks really nice. If you put your graphics up to high or play on Remastered, Chilling Wave looks fun. Yeah, I mean, the water effects look pretty nice, but... Yeah, I guess I'm biased because you hate yeah, that it's the worst ability in the game, so... Okay, that, stop. It is. What do you want from me? The worst... Stop. It's at... It's, it's the worst ability in the game. I'm honestly convinced of it. No. I don't know how you could say that. There's abilities that people Dude, lock. Dude, it doesn't even have... Like, the frontal guard is only it there has frontal for, guard. like, you half just have of to the not duration. Be like, there's Whatever a gap every other second in the frontal guard. I get CC'd through it constantly. 24-7. You need to get good. No, right? it's not about getting good. It's about that skill fucking sucks. And they need to fix it's it. It's not the worst. You need to take that claim back. This maybe maybe that was a little bit of an exaggeration. Look. But just know that exaggeration is made because it's a very emotional thing. That ability could be really great and it should be at least comparable to gore roll and it's not even close not even close it's not close no i agree but it's still a semi-viable skill look I, i'm gonna you made me do this because it's the worst ability in well, awakening like, can we agree here, with that here's no, no, no. This is an awakening skill I'm about no, to no, tell you. So Wizards this is a skill. In oh, in Wizard's Awakening. Um, there's no there's no other Wizard Awakening that's worse. I don't know if there's a Wizard... Is there a Wizard pre-awakening that's worse? Let me check. They only have like four skills. Yeah. What's, what's um, worse? Dagger Stab maybe would be worse? Than, than no, Wave. Dagger Stab's pretty good in PvP. Dude, alright. But here's the here's a worse skill. I'm just gonna give you this. Flow Ascension on, on Tamer. After you use Garuda, which is just a forward poke that does pretty high damage, gives them magic DP debuff and floats and has an air attack and air smash. Uh, there's a skill if you keep holding F that does 339% times 4 and the chop does 339% times 4 with 100% crit and has air attack and down attack when you hit with it it's actually worse than an auto attack like you could just auto attack it auto attacks damage I'm gonna give you the auto attacks damage is is 405 times 2 and 405 times 3 it actually even has a higher percentage the auto attack has a higher percentage than this flow. Jeez. It's so bad. It's also such a tiny... Boy, that skill makes no sense! And the animation isn't fast. It's so dumb. <laughs> Chilling Wave is way cooler than Flow Ascension, right? So, Alright, so where do you rank Wizard? I actually... Well, hold on. I actually did some research. There actually is one ability that is worse than Chilling Wave, but only one in Wizard's entire kit. Okay. It's called Resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That skill's bad. <laughs> really good Altar of Blood right now during this event, though. Dude, I, I still... Do, I've been playing this game since launch. Still don't know how to use that skill. <laughs> Dude, it works the same way as the item. Oh, my God. All right. So, what what does this put it at? Uh, oh, I haven't been putting the overalls over here. What do we put Kuno at? B+. Plus? B plus, which was an S. So it ends up being um, S, A, B, and B plus. So can we just say S? Yeah, just because of the importance of large scale. But I want every witch out there to know it's better than wizard. All right, moving on. We got the now. Actually, wizard versus witch in a one v one. In a one v one. Yeah. I think Wizard Edge is not Witch, but slightly. Like, very slightly. 
But here's the thing. <laughs> but I there's this quote. I forget who made it. I saw it like a month ago. It said, anytime someone says blah, 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 but you can just ignore the first part of that statement. So allow me to say, yeah. wizard edges out, which in 1v1, slightly, but which destroys wizard in large scale. Destroys it. Crushes it. Absolutely wrecks it. Slightly better, maybe. Not it slightly. destroys it. The only reason, the only reason I would also put Wizard at an S is because of PA. If Wizard didn't have PA, which would still be an S, and Wizard would be at A for large scale. Yeah. I, that's just how it is. Because here's the thing: when you compare, I'll agree with you that long range capabilities Wizard does beat Witch. It do, because of Rebomb Fireball, even though a lot of people don't take it, which is really strange. You should really take Rebomb Fireball. Um, well, yeah, well, it's one of those things. Like, if you're not good, if it's if you're not great, you should definitely just be taking the heal because it's going to be better for your guild. But if you're really, really good, you can make. Yeah, it's so good. It's on a pretty low cooldown too, surprisingly for how good it is. Um, but as far as like dive capability, which is you know. A really big part of Siege. Yeah, Witch just destroys Wizard. Like, it completely. It's not even close. So let's look at their dive combos, right? You dive in, what's the first thing you're doing? Well, typically it's gonna be your main skill. Voltaic versus Cataclysm. There's, you can't even argue which one's better. I mean, it's just, it's Voltaic, obviously. It's not even close. So, Voltaic beats out Cataclysm. What comes next? Well, it's probably going to be your next protected or your next super armor damage skill, right? So Voltaic is followed by Thunderstorm, typically. Keep in mind, this is all I'm only speaking typically and from what I've seen and what I've done on these two classes. So typically you'll go Voltaic Thunderstorm. Typically on a wizard, you would go either Cataclysm Bolide or Cataclysm Aqua Jail. I personally, mm. after the buff to Aqua Gel, I'd probably do Aqua Gel, but I still don't know. It, it, it's very, very situational, right? Like, if right. nobody like, is. Thunderstorm is more damage. Yeah, and right? Thunderstorm is oh. more damage than I think even Bolide. Let me check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I'm pretty confident it is. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I, no, it I definitely is. That, if, it, it, it definitely is if you account for the flow. Thunderstorm has a flow. Bolide doesn't. The right. flow that just gives it more damage. It's not actually a second ability. It just gives Thunderstorm more damage. So it absolutely does more damage than Bolide if you account for the flow. And then if you want to say, well, Aqua Gel has a flow too. Yeah, and people just walk out of Aqua Gel because its damage is spread out over like three seconds. So if nobody right. is CC'd, or if there's only like two people CC'd, that Aqua Gel ain't hitting shit. So I typically would go with a Bolide next just to get some guaranteed damage. Unless, again, after the buff, if they're PA'd, you're probably better off doing Aqua Gel, trying to get an evasion debuff down. So what happens after that point? Because now the two, like, obvious, quote-unquote, obvious things are done. As a Witch, probably your next thing to do is Gore Roll. It's only Frontal Guard, but it CCs literally everyone in its path. It does an insane amount of damage. And you can actually turn it, like, pretty easily. Like, you don't need to click to move. It just kind of moves naturally. Like, Goral pretty does? well. Yeah. Pretty, it moves pretty well. So, yeah, typically you'd go into Goral, and that's probably netting you at least three or four kills, because that ability is fucking insane. Uh, as a wizard, your third ability is probably whatever you didn't use second. It's going to be either Aqua Gel or Bolide, and both of those are terrible at this point in the dive, because usually whoever was CC'd is probably not CC'd anymore. If you do Hellfire, you're dying. If you do Chilling Wave, maybe you get lucky. Probably not. You're probably dying. And, uh, yeah, the only other thing you could do is if you casted Sages before you dove, you could do Meteor. But you should be using Meteor probably either initially when you dive, like double TP in, like Sage, double TP Meteor, or you're using it before you dive. Meteor, double TP in, Cataclysm. 
So you probably don't have meteor either way. So it's just like the way in which you dive for both of these classes. Like if you just compare the skill rotations that you would very commonly see people do. And I know there's going to be so there's probably going to be so many people. Well, that's not the skill rotation I would do. Okay, fine. You're a fucking god at the game, dude. Whatever. I'm speaking from what I've seen other witches and wizards do and what I personally have done. These are very typical combos, and it's not even close. Right out the gate, which has added a, a, a head start, Voltaic, compared to Cataclysm, and that gap only widens. Especially with BSR Thunderstorm. <laughs> well, but then you have to count the... the Well, I don't know. To be honest, like both Wizard and Witch pro probably should be transferring Rage to Tamer. Probably should. Although it's hard, it's hard for Tamer because they're not usually with the main ball. Yeah, Zerker. Well, you could get Zerker. I don't know. Yeah. Transferring Rage in general is tedious. It That's is. the one thing in this game that should be tap target. You should be able to select your party member in the party list. Uh, I still personally think that you shouldn't be able to transfer Rage at all, and they should just make the classes that, without their ultis or kind of dog shit, actually good at large scale. But. That's a really yeah. radical opinion to some people, so... Alright, Colin, that... I think that's fair. Dude, I wouldn't mind... Do you know how many people only get frags with their ultis that are really angrily typing up a comment right now? <laughs> okay, anyway, enough about my rant about Witch and Wizard. I'm sure I'm gonna get added in Discord a bunch. Probably by Ro. Fucking cunt. Moving on. Okay. Well, there goes our PG rating on the thing. Dude, it. Uh, go ahead. When has this channel ever been PG? <laughs> You're gonna get banned. Uh, what's next? DK. All right, Dark Knight. We just talked to um, Etsu, so this should be pretty fresh in our minds. Yeah. And according to Etsu, um, this class so is dog shit. You shouldn't play it. It's the worst thing in the whole game. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a. Uh, A hard class to judge. It is. Because it's not... Here's the thing. Every... Like, literally everybody, either consciously or subconsciously, compares it to Sorg. And like that comment, I think, on our last podcast said, anything... Almost any class compared to Sorg is going to look kind of bad. Like, that should not be your comparison. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's true. Um, but, like, I, I don't... I okay, just don't feel like one... DK's in that bad of a spot. Not at 269. Right. Um. I think it's 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 play style is like convoluted right now because it. I don't know. I think the when they created the class, they kind of they forgot what they should do with it. You know what I mean? Like, so it's ranged skills as everyone gets DP, like no longer hit. But it's melee skills do, but it's like squishy melee, so it can't. It's just not a ball class. But the problem is, when you're running around the map, it's not fast enough to be a flex class either. So it's in this weird, confused spot where they just feel like they don't have a purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. So uh, for me personally, I I would give it a again if i if i could i guess a b minus in large scale because it doesn't fill a role that's better than anyone in particular um at range folks and then melee like there's just slightly better melee classes well, so, so ask yourself we put kuno large scale at a b maywa large scale at a c what is it closer to yeah I, i'll give it i'll give it a c i'm gonna be fair i'm gonna be fair to dk's on this one and give it a c um but I would give, I would give it's one v one an A. I think it's capable of beating everybody in a one v one if the DK is good enough. Um, in pretty much every matchup, I think if uh, Mystic's gear is insane, like their DP, then it, it becomes really hard. But I think uh, outside of that, it's fine. Or Striker as well with the same the same preface. Um, yeah, I think in in PVE it's also an A. Uh, almost for sure, it's good everywhere. 
I don't even know if it's bad at any spot. Uh, maybe Sakura, but it's good at low tier grinding. It's good at high end grinding. Um, and then aesthetically, I put it at a B. I'm not a big fan of the. Uh, I'm just wearing nylons, but <laughs> I'm a knight. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not a fan of that, but apparently people in this game love it. Uh, its skills look really cool though, both pre awakening and awakening. So I would give it its, its look like a B plus or an A if I could. I guess I guess uh, I'll sit with a B because I don't love its outfits or that style. But yeah, yeah so. aesthetically I would give it an A. So I I just the skill animations for that class are so like incredible. Honestly, in both pre awakening and awakening, I I like all of them. Honestly, um. But yeah, I think I agree with pretty much everything. C for large scale, A for PVE. I don't really have any evidence to suggest that they're like super OP, but nor do I really hear people complain about it, aside from like, oh, we have to chug a lot of pots. So it's like, you know, A, sure. And what do you want A? I think it's fine. They're very safe class, I feel like. Like, it, against the DK who knows what they're doing, I feel like it's kind of hard to catch them, honestly. So even though mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes they might struggle to catch you, the, you also can't catch them. So it's just kind of like this weird thing where they just kind of like, you just dance around and then you slowly get damage chipped off of you, unless you're like a warrior. So, but, uh, so that puts it at C, A, and A. Where do you think it goes overall? Uh, I would say a B. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Ooh. Yep. Okay. Oh, what happened? Okay. <laughs> I messed up my uh, my list over here. Accidentally. I still I still can't believe that detonated flow and water sphere do the same damage. I wonder so much <laughs> if. Uh, I mean, maybe it's just the flow that gives me that that feeling. But I also wonder if the PvP damage reduction yeah, is... Yeah, uh, that's what I was about to say. The one thing we don't know is the PvP damage reduction. Maybe it's uh, less. Who knows? Um, Striker, it's time. It's time for us to fight where you try and convince me that Striker is dog shit. I don't think it's dog shit. I think it's, uh, I think it's an A in 1v1s. I think it, it's solid in 1v1s. It, it's capable of beating almost every class. It struggles versus Ninja, or Kuna, like everyone else. But um, it's pretty good. I think it's a fair matchup against everybody else, honestly. Uh, again, Dark Knight, I have to preface with, like, if the Striker has more than, like, 316 DP, it starts becoming really hard for Dark Knights. But outside of that, um, I think Striker's pretty good in all the matchups. Um, uh, large scale is weird for me because its leg drop is great, right? Like really, really great burst damage. But, and its movement is pretty good, especially with the ball, like the short bursty protected movement and it has good super armor rotations. The problem is uh, when, when you don't have PA, you become useless. And this is a problem with like all of the frontline classes. Now Zerker has the advantage of being able to jump in, leg drop, and then run back out. So that is Wait, helpful. Zerker that, can jump in and leg drop? I mean, sorry, uh, Striker. Striker has the advantage of being able to run in, jump in, leg drop, that Skull Crusher, and then get out and get some burst damage in there. And their, their ult is nice in a ball as well. But I outside of that I don't think they're great in large scale it requires a lot of DP so for me I'm going to give them a B in large scale because I think really good strikers with really really good gear that also includes DP can do well but everyone else kind of struggles unless you're against low tier guilds like really low tier guilds so yeah and then um, grinding grinding it's solid it's not great anywhere um, it's not horrible anywhere either. It's like right in the middle, so it has B grinding. Uh, and then aesthetically, I think the clones are really cool. I think it's pre-awakening is super, super, super boring. 
really, really boring and uninventive and exciting in any way. The hopping stuff is kind of cool, but that's about it. Uh, the awakening animations look cool, though, and I kind of like the whole big old Jax from Mortal Kombat looking arms. So I, I kind of like the striker aesthetically. So I'll give it a B. Okay. Um, what do I got to argue with that? you on here? Oh, you know, the usual. I don't. I don't disagree with you too much, honestly. I think your assessment's fair. I think. I think all the frontline classes are feeling a little fucked in large scale right now. It's uh, it's really not a fun environment to be. And uh, so, what are the frontline classes? I like on, or what were they? And what do we think of them as? Like, it would be Valk, Warrior, Striker, Mystic, right? And then maybe Zerker. Although they've always been a little bit questionable because yes. they don't have the same block and stuff. So Correct. Of, well, now they of, have S-Block, so... Well, now they have S-Block. But of those four, I'll give you that Striker's the best frontline class. But the best of a thing that's not good, you know, is one of those right. weird situations. And that's why I'm saying, like, they're, you know, we're all struggling out here. It, it ain't good, fam. It ain't good. Um, and I think that's something that as a Zerker, who, like, I personally think Zerker should be a frontline class, but they can kind of function as not a frontline class, right? Q both, all of a sudden it becomes the best range class in the game, and then ulti, all of a sudden it becomes one of the best flankers in the game. So, it's kind of in this weird area where... I kind of felt like other classes, other frontline classes were in similar situations. And then I played Warrior. And God, is other classes not in the same situation as Berserker in terms of large scale. It ain't even close. Um, it's rough out there for people that don't have super powerful class buffs that make them incredibly OP. And an ult that can literally clear entire groups. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, um, yeah, I think I'm a little more understanding of the plights of strikers now in terms of large scale. Um, and I don't really have one thing to say or another in terms of PvE. It seems like they struggle a little bit at like tougher grind spots because a lot of their damage is front loaded, but they are probably uh, one of the best at sort of the mid tier spots. And uh, so, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of like evens out a little bit. They're not so crazy good at one -one games. Yeah, so uh, this is the one thing I disagree with. Okay. It, to me... Now remember, I, rate them, I rated them hot. I know. And that's, it is hot. I'm not, too, I'm not too upset with your rating. I can see where you're okay. saying these things, but to me, Striker is an S. I mean, it just is. I, I like. It has so much protection... It has so much CC potential, and the one thing that really irks me that people never talk about is, or rarely, they rarely, I won't say never, rarely do they bring this up. Striker has multiple protected CC movement abilities that, as far as I'm aware of, not a lot of other classes have like i can right. only think of like mystic has the same thing in their pre-awakening except i think they changed the queue right for mystic yeah they, they changed the twisted closure and doesn't have frontal guard anymore on mystic but their uh their side of right click is still the same mm -hmm. right Mass destruction is the same, yeah. And then you have... They work a little different, but the rules are the same. Yeah, basically. But Striker, even in that comparison, Striker is still better because you can turn Strikers. You can't turn Mystics. Correct. So it still edges it out. Then you have what? You have Warrior's uh, Shield Charge? Which... Mm -hmm. Well, you have, you have Dragon... Like Dragon yeah, Bite. Yeah, that's what I was about I, to say think... next, was you had Dragon Bite from okay. Musa and Mewa. Mm -hmm. On on Tamer, you have Hailing Scratch, which is the one where while you're using the iframe, you can press um, 
R and B, which is like the scratch skill while you're in the air, and it'll switch from iframe to super armor during that animation and it has a stiffness on it. So it's that is while you're moving as well. Yeah. Um but you're right, there's not a lot and Striker does have I think quite a few. I'm trying to think, what are the I think they have three. I mean wait, no, two. So twisted stop. mass destruction. Um Twisted's a big one. But oh well I mean can we count the flow for Twisted? Nimbus Strike is fucking protected and moves you forward further from Twisted. Is that the one where it goes like uh While you're in the air you dive forward. Yeah. Not down, but F. forward and it's DC on hit. Yeah. That skill is really good too. Yeah. So uh, and they also have all right, so there was a patch that nerfed Mystic. Mystic's been nerfed. Well, I can't remember if it happened back when we did our tier list, but Mystic got nerfed. The Crouching Wolf. There's a flow for Crouching Wolf called Prey Hunt that basically makes it so you don't lose your shards when you use it. And when you use it with three shards, it would stiffen targets in that area. So it was an AoE stiffness. Um, and they removed that. And in the notes, they said... Crouching Wolf on Striker and Mystic no longer will stiffen uh, in PvP when used with three shards. But the Striker still does, even though the note said it's not supposed to. Which I find uh, upsetting. Granted, Striker is harder to get three stacks than Mystic, but... Yeah, so all of the flows to Twisted Collision are protected. Yeah. All they of them. Are. Although two of them, two two of them are pretty meh. Really, Nimbus Strike is the big one. The other, yeah. You know, um, what else? Do they have anything else? I'm trying to think. They have. Oh, uh, Somersault. The flow to Somersault. Is that protected though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the Somersault flow. Um, uh, I forget the exact rules on that skill because that one's like. A little bit newer. Oh, the you're first, right. Like, year it is. Strike. Rising blast combo. Mm -hmm. What? What? Can you read that one? Yeah, it's super armor and floating. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of like bounces you backwards, but the range isn't. The range is not small. It that shit'll hit you if you're near. Yeah, you them. can also. I was messing around with this whenever I was just fucking around on striker, and you can actually. I don't. Hmm. Do I actually want to tell people this? Nobody's gonna do it. It's too much work. You can actually cheat the system by click to moving to actually go in the specific direction that you want to go in. Funnily enough. With Somersault? Yeah. So, because the Somersault throws you back, but what you can actually do is the second you activate the ability, you can click to move behind you. It'll still hit in front of you from the test that I was doing a while back, but you'll actually fly backwards, like, over your target. It's kind of funny. But it's a lot of work. It's not particularly useful, but it was just something that I was messing around with because I was literally sitting there wondering what other classes could benefit from click the move that people don't know about. So I was testing around with Striker a little bit. But anyway, um, yeah, Zerker uh, or not Zerker, Striker has a lot of uh, protected movement CCs, and this is the one thing that irks me because, like. Because you want these on your... Other classes, not all, but other classes may have one. Triker is a lot, man. Like, they just have so much in their kit that benefits them in 1v1s in, like, really incredible ways. It makes them so protected. It makes them... I'm not even going to get into the mental of... Or the idea of, like, they're in the air for, like, the entirety of, like, Somersault for sense right it's so hard to figure out where someone is in the air to grab them it, it's a pain in the ass granted you do get lucky and sometimes they get the fall animation yeah. and they see yeah something. So that's really nice but like <laughs> it, it's just what other class has as many protected movement ccs as striker and again, I'm 100% certain there's some angry strikers out there right now just typing up their comment. <laughs> like, I don't care. This class... That's not all strikers. This <laughs> class... You're right, it's more like ook, 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 ook. Um, 
it, this class is incredible in 1v1. Is it as strong as Ninja? No. Is it as strong as Sword? No. Is that because Striker is weak? No. That's because those two classes are insane right now. And it really, I think it boils down even more so to the argument of iframes versus frontal guards and super armor. Honestly, I think it does. But we don't have time to get into that right now. So, I TLDR, striker for me, 1v1, goes in S without a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. It's not even a question in my mind. So, if you believe it goes in A, that's fine. I I just don't see how you can believe that, but okay, I'll accept it. Averages out to an A+. So, B, B, and A+. Where do you think it goes overall? God, I don't know. It's... It's probably a B. It's probably... I think I... I also think... I think maybe I weight my A higher than you. Because I, I feel like A means it's really, really good. Like, really, really... Yeah, I know. Anyway. So B is... So I'm also, giving it overall a B. Also, your, mostly your, also your A yeah. is in 1v1. Right, my A is in 1v1. But that's what I meant. I was talking about... You said I don't know how... You could think it's an A and one v one. Oh, and I, I'm saying like because for me, A and one v one is is really. Yeah, but it's not just really good; it's insane. So. <laughs> uh, so so where do you o overall be? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Large scale. Listen, as annoying as I find strikers to be in one v ones, especially because people like to compare Zerker and Striker a lot because oops, um. You know, I, I just don't think, uh, I actually personally believe Striker is better than Zerker in 1v1s, honestly. But, uh, they're both S to me. Right. Undoubtedly, it can't be argued, Striker is having a rougher time in large scale than Zerker is. Which is like, yeah. if you're playing BDO 9 times out of 10, like, you're probably doing Node Wars or some sort of GVG, some sort of large scale at some point. So, uh, I think putting it at B is fair. I have had not one, not two, but three. Just to give you an example of the state of Striker, three Strikers asked me if they could be in Flex instead of the main Yeah, ball. I imagine. That's how confused those poor yeah. cells are. Well, I mean, if they don't have their ult, then they're dying just as fast as fucking everybody else out there. That's the other thing that bothers me. Why do people act like striker ult is bad? I don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't think it's bad. I just think it's not amazing. I mean, it's cool because it's invulnerable. It has, it has a really cool utility, I think. It's a cool ult. I like that it's unique to what it is. Yeah. I don't think it's bad. Like, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's just... top tier ulti. No, I'm not saying it's fucking Tamer or Zerker ulti, but it ain't bad. That's for damn sure. Right. But anyway, it's time for Mystic. Should I just go ahead and write S for PVE? <laughs> yeah, S for PVE. Um, I think in large scale, it's the same as a striker, about a B. It's, it's just lost its place with all the nerfs and everyone getting more damage and all of the ranged classes being out. Um, so it's hard for it to move around and it dies very quickly. Uh, the difference between it and striker is that I wouldn't say it's worse enough that it deserves a C mm -hmm. in large scale because it's yeah. not. But it's... Mystic is known for like it has sustained damage, right? Like that's how it works. It's like you can nothing is bursty, but you can put out a lot of damage if you're getting your entire rotation off. It's just very hard to do that in a ball now, unless you have insane amounts of DP. So, or B. Um, if yeah, I it's a B with striker. It's just a lower tier B. Um, and then yeah, grinding is an A. One v one. I also grinding is an S. You mean? I mean an S. Yeah, one v one. I would put it at an A. 
I think it's very, very good. It's even capable of killing ninjas and sorks in 1v1 if you know how to play your class. Um, and I think if you know how a mystic plays and you actually practice, I think they're beatable. I, I actually think they're really in a like a super, super fair spot in 1v1s for me personally. I think they're in a cool place 1v1s because they have risk to some of their play now that Twisted's not protected, now that they don't have protection on uh, Crouching Wolf, but I think that they still can be very good. I, I just, man, the, I played it for like a weekend a couple weeks ago and I, in Node Wars, I actually was like, wanted to cry. I was like, what happened to this class? Yeah. Hey, let me guess, an S for aesthetics? Because I know you love it. Uh, I think it looks really cool. I think it's uh, the pre-awakening is same as Striker. It's very boring and awful. I don't think it has a lot of good costumes, but the good ones look really cool. And the water animations are just uh, the best I've seen in any video game for water animation skills. And I think they look really cool. So, yeah. I, I, and, I mean, I'd give it an A. Not an S, but an A. I don't know if any class deserves an S. Uh, Zerker and Wizard. It, if it could be like just an Awakening, I would give it an S, but man, that Pre Awakening is so ugly that it, it's just not. It's literally dust. Its Pre Awakening skill is dusty. <laughs> it's just. Be Alright, uh, I agree. Across the board. So we got B, S, and A. Yeah, I think it puts it at the same spot as Striker. For the most part, better than striker grinding, slightly worse than large scale, in my opinion, and everything else is about. Uh, I mean, one v ones. I think it's the same, but I think you think striker is better in one v one. Mm hmm. I think it. The. I, mm. I know everyone hates the vacuum, but now it's gotten to the point. Like gear's gotten so good that you don't even see. Like if someone's vacuuming, you just go <laughs> kill them. And then they're no longer back. It's so weird. The vacuum has gotten weird now. Because, like, suddenly the power of the vacuum went from Mystics being the most broken to now Valks, because Valk can do it. At I think I'd place Mystic at an A. At an A? I think so. I think. Why? I mean. I think they're similar yeah. in large scale. I literally think the only difference is Striker has a better ultimate, but... No, dude, Striker's leg drop. See, the, <sighs> the difference is you get to jump in, do a bunch of damage, and get out. Like, Mystic really can't. I promise can't. you that you Striker is still dying, dude. <laughs> I promise no, you. No, I, I, know, I know they are, but they don't have to do more than one skill. Uh, I mean, I... It's not that they kill everybody in one skill, but they can go in. Everyone knows you can die to a leg drop in a war. Yes. You're not dying to one mystic skill in any. Well, you obviously haven't fought Dildo Dragon. <laughs> Actually, I did. I spent about an hour fighting him the other day, and uh, <laughs> it wasn't fun. Um, it was not my. I don't know. I think if mystic's worse, it's negligible, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. In 1v1s... I just think it's slightly worse in large scale. In, in 1v1s, slight. sure, they're worse, but 1v1s aren't weighted very heavily, at least in my mind. I know you weigh them pretty heavily. I personally don't, because you can go your entire fucking video career without doing a single fucking 1v1 outside of an odd encounter in Node War. And even then, you don't really have to do it. You can just fucking run away. So it's like... I, I personally don't weigh 1v1s that heavily. What the f You could, but why would you? It's like one of the most fun things in let's, this game. So let's you say know. every other grapple attempt you do results in you being CC'd because you succeeded in grappling them. How would that make you feel about 1v1s? Every other grapple I did but, succeeded? Yeah, let's live in my shoes for a second, Frosty. <laughs> Wait, you're a warrior. Every grapple succeeds. You have to ignore grapple res. Dude. Uh, my grapples get resisted in the classes I play. I was fighting Tyler the other day because he's uh, trying to learn Zerker, so I was trying to teach him some stuff. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. single grapple desync from him on me. I was like, oh, oh, I feel it. <laughs> I feel the pain. 
Oh, he was desync. Yeah, dude, like, like every he started, single one. He would grapple you yes. and get desynced. Yes, uh, okay. <laughs> like every time, dude. I felt so bad. I was like, yeah, welcome to Zerker, buddy. <laughs> um, But here's the thing. Here's why I think Mystic is an A. I, I think it's worse than 1v1s, but I just don't weigh it that heavily. I'm weighing it. Like, I'm keeping that in mind. But it, I think you're just weighing it heavily, more heavily, um, heavily than I am. Okay. Grinding? I don't know. It's yeah. two ranks. Not one. Two ranks above striker for grinding. Okay. How does that end up going in the I same the... tier? Well, because it's the, the a large scale. I, I difference, think strikers will... No, it's not. Dude, I, I think you will have, if you have the exact same gear, you have more success on a striker than you would on a mystic. Straight up. You'll get more kills and you'll be able to survive a little bit longer because you can go in, use one ability and get the fuck out. If you have PA up, both can sit in there. If you don't, you can use an ability and get out. And when you, if you're comparing their alts, like the mystic alt, not only does it not do damage, but it also is like super armor, not, not an ivory. Hold on, I have to kill this Musa. Uh, never mind, Musas are not good at 1v1, I guess. I just, um, I, I think Mystics and Strikers are both having a miserable time out there. And it's, if it's not equal, sure, but it's almost equal. I think they're both struggling. But I think Striker, because of the buffs, is pretty decent at grinding now. That's the thing. Like, I don't think it's worth making, back when we did this tier list last time, you should probably make a mystic grinding alt if you're a striker main. Now, I just don't think it's worth it. I think that striker is good enough that it, it's fine. Well, I guess we agree to disagree, and this bitch goes right in B+. All right. I'm also offended because you're saying that mystic is as bad as warrior, and that's just not true. Moving on. Um... <laughs> I think, I mean, fuck, I could make an argument that it's worse. <laughs> That'd be a hard a argument grind. to make, brother. Just, just not a grind. I mean, just looking at the stats, you gave Mystic a B, you gave Warrior a C, you gave Mystic an S, you gave Warrior a B, and you gave Mystic an A, and you gave Warrior an A. So in what way is it worse? Well, in that A, though, the Warrior's way, way, way more A. I, I agree. It's probably yeah. top tier A, and then Mystic's kind of mid to low tier, maybe A, but A nonetheless. No, no, no. Anyway, let's move on. This is... Juan. I don't want, like, you talking ill. Juan. <laughs> uh, Lon is... I think Lon has evolved a little bit. People are getting pretty good at Lon and understanding it now more than before so I, I think Lana is actually pretty decent in but it's S tier in 1v1 just straight up it is an S it can hang with the best of them it's grab is really good um yeah it's an S tier in 1v1 for sure uh in large scale it is weird because it's a flex but not the greatest flex although it is really good on cannons um, and for <laughs> scouting as flex, like you can get up and defend against cannons as well. Um, so for, I don't know, for large scale, I'd probably say B. If I could give it a lower tier B, I would. Because you, you can't fight in the ball. You're, you're forced to be flex at all times, basically. Um, but they can make a difference in wars. Like I've seen them fly in and stop rebuilds like so much. They're very good at it. So I'm going to give them a B there. Uh, castle siege is the thing. Like, I think they're less effective in a castle, or against a castle, anyway. Um, and then grinding, they're they're pretty much S tier. I mean, they're very good everywhere, and they have a ton of sustainability. They're like really, really efficient at basically every spot. So, and aesthetically, I think they look really cool. I would give their aesthetics a B. Um, yeah. You said aesthetically, you'd give it a B. Yeah, I'd give it a B. Yeah, yeah it's a, maybe an A. Its animations are really cool. Well, you gotta pick one because I'm not doing. Ah, give it an A. All right, okay. give it an A in aesthetics. Its animations are too cool not to. Okay, it's got to be. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, I think I'm in agreement. They're gods in fucking 1v1. You know, they're up there with the best. They have it all. Movement, protection, CC. Their grab is insane. <laughs> um, their large-scale potential isn't super good. Their flex class, not quite there with um, Ninja, Sork, and Musa, I think. But not quite Maywa territory either. So I think it makes sense to put them in B. That would put them large scale around the same rating as a tamer, which I think makes sense. Um I think that's probably a that's probably a mid to high B, while Tamer I think is a mid to low B. Yeah. And the the Lun all is actually pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. That's it'll kill you. Um uh, and then grinding, yeah, I, I, I've literally never heard a single complaint about Lon's grind speed, I don't think, aside from pot chugging again. Like, they seem like they're cruising along quite well. Um, no, no, they don't They don't even have to pot chug. They don't? They, uh, all of their skills have HP on hit. They have, like, more HP on hit on their skills than any other class. Like, way more. Almost their entire awakening I thought they had HP to on hit. Uh, mana pots, though. Do they not? No. Mm, I don't think so. I well, they're they WP did. or SP or whatever, but I'm yeah. pretty sure they don't. I don't remember using mana or WP on them. Oh, personally. I thought they did. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I've never maybe, played Lawn, maybe. so my experience is pretty much what other people say about it and me fighting. Um, so we have B, S, and S. Where does that put it? Um, B, S, and S. I mean, I think a B. I think it's a pretty solid class to play overall. It's not the best. I mean, the, I don't know. It depends on the weight of large scale. Like, it could be an A if large scale wasn't so important. That's my thing. So, like, again, this is where I wish I could just say B+. plus. Okay, I just got confirmation. Lund does not use any pots while grinding, basically. I mean, just ask someone. <laughs> yeah, just ask someone. So, no. Uh, now they're saying, are you going to reroll the Lund? Um... He might. Don't tempt him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, man. Like that's a weird. It's a weird thing because I ranked everything so high, but I still think overall she's like I wouldn't recommend her over any of the other classes in A or S. You know, that's the thing. All right. So Where for me, it? so for me, she's kind of she's a B. If we can wait one v ones higher, then I guess A. So. I don't know, man. Where where would you put her? Right? Maybe I need. I think I'd put her in A. I again, I think. I think large scale B is fine. B is a fine rating, but again, I think that's a mid to high B. Like I don't think they're struggling like every other flex class struggling, but they're not. Uh, they ain't the worst out there. I see lawns fragging out regularly. Um, and again, their PVE seems really good. Um, and their 1v1 is insane. I know, like, the idea of saying lawn is an A tier class is kind of weird. But when you break it down and really just look at it logically, I think. I mean, it's probably a B plus, but we can't do B plus, and it definitely ain't a B with Warrior, Ranger, Tamer, Maywa, DK, and Striker. So to me, that means it goes an A. Okay. okay. Sticking my gun. Yeah. I, I think if that results in a B plus, I I can live with that. I Archer. If I remember um, correctly, <laughs> I think we, uh, didn't we give Archer S's across the board last time? <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was, I can't remember what we did for 1v1, but I'm going to say this. I think, I think Archer is S tier in large scale, S tier grinding, and I think in 1v1, it's a really, really high A. So for me, just overall, the class is an S. Aesthetically, I think it looks kind of cool. The animation's... I don't think, or I wish it wasn't yellowish. I wish they went with a slightly more exciting color for that class, honestly. Like, it would be cool. We don't have like a solid, just normal, like deep blue. 
Like we have teal on classes, but we don't have like a blue, like a normal like navy like blue or blue, you know? Like a, what's that Ninja Turtle, a Donatello? Yeah. We don't have a Donatello blue. Or no, Leonardo. Wait, Donatello's the purple. We don't have a Leonardo blue. Oh, you're right. Um, yeah. But aesthetically, I don't know, probably, probably a B. It's just what. Yep. I agree. Across the board. S, S, A, and then aesthetically a B. Looks pretty nice. Wish it was slightly different colors. Like the whole like wolf thing. Wish they had done a little bit more with that actually. But um overall yeah. S tier. Yeah, I agree. If if you play Archer and you don't think it's good in 1v1, I'm not gonna sit here and belittle you, but you are <laughs> wrong. So You're just go like actually ask someone, like go to General Moore's YouTube channel and ask him for help. He he will sit with you. He, at the very least he'll type up on Discord why it is capable of winning in one v ones against just about everybody. So yeah, they they are very good at one v one. You just have to know the matchups. Yep, it's uh, overall a very very powerful class with little to no downsides. Um, all right, moving on. This one's a weird one. It's shy, which is a weird thing because it can't one v one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, a quick little aside. In our siege on Saturday, Cinny was nine kills away from Stormtrooper on his archer. He was like 91 and 18 or something. Oh, it feels bad. Against Vertex and Filter, which is not easy guilds to right. fight. <laughs> so, Archer's fucking amazing, dude. Alright, uh, Shy. I don't even know what the fuck. Uh, hey, what, are we, what are we supposed to rank it here? <laughs> uh, I, I still don't know if they're done with the class because they've not recently now it's been a few weeks but they were adding skills even after it came out and after the awakening or awakening in quotes the talents came out um, I think it is it's, it's an S tier grinder just straight up it's mobility is not great but at high-end spots it's super good even if you have kind of not great gear which is weird it scales interesting because it's a lot of hits it also has a ton of sustainability because of its support skills plus hp on hit is actually insane on that class since they hit like 27 times per skill and that's not an exaggeration <laughs> um and they're way wood. it's like large scale so 1v1 obviously it's a just an f i guess because <laughs> you, you can't if 1v1. you stun them for long enough maybe they just leave you know yeah maybe i don't know it's <laughs> 1v1s or an f um and then it's large scale I, i'm gonna give it a b right now because i think it has potential to be really good in large scale it's just there's not a lot of people that play it properly um, and like a lot of sh shy mains have complained about, it doesn't have an S block, and I think it really needs it because it gets knocked over a lot because it doesn't have an S block. So since it has no real movement outside of that little um, skip, and it doesn't have an S block, it, it really does get CC'd a lot. So it finds itself on the ground a lot, and it's hard to use support abilities when you're CC'd. And the thing is that's interesting is the CC abilities it has are protected, but the support abilities are not, and the support abilities are really all you want. If, if you're shot calling, you want your shy to buff up your guild and heal them and cast those skills and not, the CC one is kind of irrelevant for the most part. And then the bubble's just busted. It's it's broken and it's glitchy and it's buggy and I hope it gets removed or changed from the game. All it should do is block projectiles, but that's not what it does. It blocks players and pets and, and projectiles from going in or out. And it's just a glitchy, buggy, rubber banding mess and should be removed from the game entirely. And replaced with something else that's good, like an S block. Uh, so yeah, I give it a B in large scale and an F in 1v1s, uh, probably an S in PvE, I think an S in PvE, and then uh, aesthetically it's, uh, I don't know, it's, B. It's, it's a little girl, I don't know what to say, it's, it doesn't <laughs> look particularly cool. Its support animations do look cool though, I really like how they look, but 
the attacks on the boomerang are very uh, dumb looking. Yeah, I think I'm in agreement across the board. I wish it was better on large scale. That's like uh, kind of supposed to be its thing, you know, like helping other people. But yeah. it just, uh, I don't know. It doesn't, it's, it's literally a dedicated support class that is still outshined by two, the two best DPS classes arguably in the game. <laughs> yeah, I think it needs three changes. So one, remove, maybe even remove one of its like attacking abilities that are kind of useless, like either the fire or the earth one, like just get rid of them. Um, get rid of the bubble and give it one more heal, a good heal that's at least competitive with the Wiz Witch heal, even if it's a kind of long cooldown. That way they could rotate it with the other two. They have the regen and the instant heal or whatever. And give it like, I think it needs a uh, a skill that buffs the party's DP, not like Wiz Witch PA, but maybe something like all DR for 10 party members plus 40 for 30 seconds or something. So everyone feels a little bit more tanky when you're next to a shy. Plus the HP would actually make shies like buff a ball quite a bit. I think something yeah. like that. It just I don't know. The bubble's so dumb. It's such a bad idea too. I don't know. Oh, and an S block. I'm gonna go back to my original idea of like I wish. And I think I said this like a long time ago before shy even came out. I'm pretty sure. I wish that they made. Which is wizard if they if they have to keep supportive capabilities. I wish they made them offensive capabilities and then shy would be defensive capabilities in terms of their support skills. Like I I kind of wish that's how it went honestly because it just kind of makes more sense that way. Yeah, I mean since the class is already out, it is what it is. But I, I, I kind of like the idea. I've, I've heard a lot of shies say it would be interesting if you remove PA from Wizwitch and give it to the shy instead. That would really fuck up guild compositions. Mm -hmm. But it would make things interesting. Because you would suddenly see 15 to 20 witch and wizards from top guilds looking for a new home. <laughs> I'll take them, dude. <laughs> um, Alright, so we're looking at B, S, and F. <laughs> what do we got? Overall, what do you think? I don't even know. What's that average give me? I mean, I think it's a B overall. Yeah, I think it's a B overall. I mean, the, you know, one of the things I like about it that I, I think is awesome is because... It's so good in PvE, even with lower gear. I think it's cool that you don't need great gear to kind of grind at decent places with that class. So you can have it as an alt for grinding. It also gives you weight. Like it just has weight yeah. without buying weight. So you can use it as an alt without having to spend a bunch of money, which I think is kind of cool. And you don't need an awakening weapon. You can just get the main hand and the awake, or the main hand and offhand, and they don't need to be super high level and it's uh, pretty good you could get just a kudum you don't need an uber um there's no point at okay, all there's no point in uber. Uber. um all right so i sent you kind of what we're looking at is there any kind of final adjustments that you're thinking you want to make while we're looking at this um i want to put I know we're not allowed, but I want to put Sork in A+. Plus well, no, so this is badly. where we are allowed. This is where we're allowed to move things wherever we think we should go then. We just need to explain our rationale. Okay. I, I just think if I look at those classes next to it, which I, I don't necessarily recognize the icons I'm looking at here. <laughs> I think it's, a, what is it? A Musa, a Ninja, a Zerker, and Sork? Yeah. Well, did you click on the picture I, I to think, blow it up? I, I did. Let me click open. Or, oh, there we go. Nah, I still don't recognize them because I don't oh know if those God. are some okay, fancy take, looking icons. I'll take a no, new picture. No, 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 no it's it. not no, the picture. No, They're no, not no. blurry. They're clear. I just don't I don't recognize I see an axe. Oh, they have their icons. Okay, never mind. 
All right, so I think that I honestly just think Sork is better than all of those classes. It's there. I, I just the thing is, one. Sork is comparable to Ninja and all the things Ninja does well, but I think Sork is better in large scope because Sork can flex pretty well, and it's good in the ball and as a flanker. So I, 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 I think Sork is an A plus. Um, I think yeah. Stork is also an A+, plus, but for a different reason, actually. Okay. I personally think Ninja edges out Stork in large scale, if only slightly. But I think Stork is a lot better than Ninja in PvE. It's definitely better, yeah. But, man, in large scale, you know how good Dream of Doom is in large scale? <laughs> like, at, at 269, if we're even just talking about that, at 269, it does like 25 30 percent of everyone's health it hits and it's a knockdown if you do the long one and the cooldown is only eight seconds like you can just go to the side of a ball and safely throw it at range and it'll knock down a bunch of people and it could change a fight like just that alone and grim reaper's judgment is a great large scale skill if you uh use it wisely so yeah i don't know man. i, I think sork should be an a plus okay a plus it is it's, um, it's too busted not to be an A+. <laughs> what else? What what else are we thinking? Um, uh, I think... I honestly think that... Uh, let me look. I don't know. Um, kind of torn here. Cause I'm staring at three changes that need to be made right now. I, I feel like Kuno might need to be up to A... And I feel like Striker being sitting right next to Dark Knight. Yeah, I agree. Not sitting well with me. I just don't know. Like, yeah, Striker probably needs to be a B plus, and Kuno probably needs to be an A. It's the only two I really see that are a problem. Kuno, let's look, let's look at this. Kuno at A. So why do you think Kuno at A? Because we wrote down the ratings as large scale B, uh, PVE B, and then 1v1 A+. Right. Because I I would put in large scale, it's like a B+. Because it's such a good flex still. But here's And the spin is so... Here's the thing, and this is exactly why I wrote these things down. Is it... Okay close enough to ninja to warrant putting it in the same category when we gave ninja one rank higher on large scale and one rank higher on 1v1 right no but no, no and I don't think ninja belongs in A plus either though that's the thing I, That's what, I think kuno is B plus I think it's I think it stays there is where it is. Okay. I think so. Um, now, <laughs> there's two issues I'm staring at. <laughs> um, okay. I do not believe that Maywa and DK belong with all those other classes. Right. I think they should be. C I think C plus. Yeah, I agree. The only problem with DK is it's so good at grinding, and it is good at one v one. But it's it's large pretty scale mediocre. Is so too. weak though. It, it, it's so it's pretty weak. Yeah. So yeah, C plus makes sense to me. Why don't we have a B minus, dude, or an A minus? That would solve all these issues. <laughs> a a B minus would just be a C plus. The same difference. <laughs> then we could put <laughs> I don't know what school you went to dude. the home school you went to is crazy <laughs> their grading system <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, but you, you know what next time we'll have 50 categories even though we're, I like that. we're only using 1, dude. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them we're going to have 50 so it can be super spread out <laughs> alright yeah I'm with you uh, so Tamer Maywa you think or Ranger Maywa should drop no, below DK, one DK Maywa DK may D plus. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. DK may want. I think. But I, I still think strikers. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. C plus. But I still think Striker should be a B plus. Striker is a B plus. You think Striker is as good as, or not as good, but in the same realm as Punoichi, Mystic, and Lawn. Yeah, I do. I definitely do. Well, let's take a look, because again, this is why I wrote these things down. So now we can contrast and compare at the end of the day. So, uh, let's see. So, Kuno, we gave BB a plus. Striker, we gave BB a plus. So, pretty strong argument there. Mystic, we gave BSA. So, two ranks higher on the grind, one rank or half a rank lower on the uh, 1v1. And then Lawn, we gave BSS. So, similar large scale higher grind and higher 1v1 um i guess so I the agree reason with i say it yeah because i still personally think that striker is just a hair not a lot but a hair better than mystic in large scale and i think that that is enough based on how important it is to and because it got buffed in pve so it's still at least competitive in yeah. pve I so. think my I think my gut says like no that doesn't make sense but when I'm looking at it logically and again this is exactly why I wrote down everything that we rated and I'm comparing it to everything else it just it makes sense to have it in B plus so yep. my head is telling me yes sorry um all right so. Outside of that, I'm, I'm cool with the rest. I mean, I think this looks pretty okay. The only thing that might need to change... Uh, no. That doesn't really need to change. Doc sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking maybe... Yeah. We, I was thinking maybe we move Valk up to C+, but looking at the ratings, it doesn't really warrant that. It's CBB and both the DK and... Maywa are CAA. Yeah, the other thing with Balk too is that it's not easy to play. So even if you want to be good at it, it takes a ton of practice. Yeah. It's a hard class. So let me send you the revised picture and then if this is good, then this is good. It's finalized. Do, 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 do. Everybody's probably gonna make fun of me because this is of the way I send this pictures. This is the Jeopardy music. Do 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 do. There you go. Oh, do you use the snipping tool too? No, I just take a screenshot, throw it in Paint, and then crop out whatever I want to send. Oh, dude, you gotta you gotta try Windows Shift S. It's the greatest thing ever. Really? Yeah. So you press Windows key, Shift, and S, and it instantly puts you in a you can just make a box so you make a box around the image you want to send and then after you made the box you just go to the place you're sending it and press Control v and it pastes it hmm. it's freaking awesome um yeah this this looks right yeah i think the only thing that's strange to me is lawn's placement but again i think that's more of a gut feeling and again when i'm looking at what we rated it compared to the things around it it makes sense for it to be in B+, even though my gut is saying, like, why is that there? That shouldn't go there. Yeah, I mean, when I look at it, especially compared to, like, Warrior, it's 1v1 is as good as Warrior, in my opinion. It's PV is better than Warrior, and it's large scale is, like, at least it can go to flex and do something useful. Whereas, like, Warrior has to be with the ball, and a lot of them struggle. Yeah. Exactly. That's why, like, in my head, I'm like, dude, Lawn is not better than these other classes. But then I really break it down and think about it. Look at the ratings. We gave large scale a B. Warriors large scale, we gave a C. We gave the PVE an S. Warriors PVE, we gave a B. And we gave the 1v1 an S. We gave Warriors 1v1 an A. So why would it go there? We gave Ranger BBA. We gave Tamer. BBA plus and we gave Shy <laughs> BSF <laughs> Shy is kind of a weird case though, so <laughs> but yeah. I think I'm I think I'm okay with this. I think uh, I think this is good. 
Are we good? Are we finalized? We're locking it in? I'm in. I'm locked. We're locked We're in. Locked in. PS4, PS4 and Xbox players, re-roll right now. Re you heard it here. <laughs> re-roll right now. We're locked in. So this is, if you clicked on that timestamp at the beginning of the video, this is where you should be right now. Again, I do recommend if you skip to this point, going back, even if you don't have time now, do it when you have some free time and listen to all the things that we went over. We individually listed out everything and then took a step back and looked at what we had in front of us. And then we made some very minor adjustments based on class comparisons to the tier that they were in. So again, recommend going back and looking through that whole thing whenever you have some free time. Um, you know, slap it up on that other monitor while you're grinding or doing whatever terrible things you're doing. This ran really long. This ran a lot longer than I was hoping it would, but I mean, that's fine. It's good. Yeah. Remember before we hit record? This upload's gonna take forever. It is. Remember <laughs> before we hit record and I was like, yeah, I'd like to keep it to like an hour and 30. Yeah, what do we got? Uh, two hours and 45 minutes. All right. Well, they did add a bunch of class. I would be very surprised if anyone got this far in the video. Man, Comment down below do if you got this far in the video. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. This is the tier list. Um, if you disagree, let us know why. Um, you know, tell us your thoughts on it. Don't be salty. Don't be salty like me. Okay, be logical. Don't be salty. Hit us with some logical. hit him, hit us with some logic and facts. Okay, that's what we want. Logic and facts. So if you disagree, also go ahead. For a shameless plug. Whether you disagree or not, you should check out the value <laughs> pack. I I assure you most of the time Resler is wrong and we can disagree with it. <laughs> yeah, uh <laughs> I actually was expecting your band or something, so <laughs> that kind of caught me off. Yeah. Um, no, not not until they have new stuff. Check out the uh, check out the podcast that we do. Last week we had on last week yesterday <laughs> we had on uh, Blue, uh, the uh, hacker extraordinaire. He, he's the guy who uh, data mined a bunch of stuff for uh, Black Desert Online and is responsible for a lot of the quote unquote hidden numbers. That you see today that you would not have seen previously to him doing his thing which is why people refer to them as hidden numbers so check that out we had a really interesting conversation with him also a while back uh we've had plenty of people we had on fake uniform which was awesome we had on laven which was awesome nyashi who i feel like i talk about him in every video but it's just because he's that awesome of a person uh tim allen yeah we've had on quite a few people so um check all those things out Hopefully you enjoy them, and uh, we have a community Discord. Check that out. And yeah, Frosty, is that everything? I think that's everything. I think that's everything. That's everything. Uh, Want to welcome all the new people. I know Xbox has been out for a while now, and PS4 has been out for a little bit, but welcome console people to BDO. Hopefully you found this tier list useful. And at the end of the day, man, even if your class is not ranked very high on this list, Play what you enjoy, man, because at the end of the day, if playing what you have fun playing is the most important thing. So make sure you do that above all else. And uh, yeah, that'll be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time.